I the foil is wild. <laughs> Are you ready, Steven? <laughs> We're gonna breeze right past it. You. You're gonna say hi, I'm Steven, and then you're gonna un and then you're gonna mute, okay? You ready? Alright, here we go. Hi everybody, I'm Rachel. Hi, and I'm Steven. And we are the faint. I can't use that. <laughs> <laughs> use it. Oh, that was great. That was oh a great my take. god, it was so funny. That <laughs> so killed me. This Run is... it back from the top. Okay, okay. That, by the way, will inevitably be the beginning of the stream because I always think the pre stuff is so funny that stupidly I still use it. It's just a different little funny spoof. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel. And I'm Steven! And we're the Faint Divinities, a channel dedicated to playing and talking about Daggerheart, which is the new tabletop RPG from Darrington Press and Critical Role that is currently in open beta version 1.4.2. Probably for another week, we think. Maybe. Who knows? They're suspicious. They're super, super sneaky deaky about it. But, um, but uh, right now it is July 1st. We presume it'll be the second Tuesday. So we think it'll be coming out next week, which means because we have just wrapped up at least the final combat of an arc, if not all of the storylines, we need to dive back in today with some level ups first. And then we'll carry that into next week as we start, presumably, the Marauders of Windfall. So if you have been following Daggerheart and you were wanting to see what the Marauders of Windfall is all about, you probably won't see it because it'll be my take on it. And so it'll inevitably be like five episodes longer. I'm just kidding. I'm really trying to keep it succinct and, and tight. But, um, but that's what we're going to be starting next week. Um, before we dive into that, I really don't think that I have... No, 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 I do. I have one announcement. I have one announcement, which is in our endless, but thank you so much, Squire. Thank you so much, Squire. <laughs> okay, I do have one announcement, which is that in our, not never ending, but <laughs> illustrious, I don't know. We are trying to run some mid to high level one shots and our level six should be this Friday. It was supposed to be last Friday, but that did not work for uh, internet related issues. Thanks everybody who showed up for our level six session zero, um, which I have decided to put on YouTube guys. It'll go up. Uh, content is content. <laughs> and um but on Friday, we're going to do our level six one shot, which, by the way, we've decided is going to be the first half of actually a two shot. Our level seven will be the second half of it the following Wednesday. Oh, Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> the following Tuesday. Good, good night. Yeah. So we'll get you some more announcements. Don't yeah. you worry about it. But uh, but here's a great time to follow our Discord. Um, because if you follow our Discord, then you'll see me correct myself for anything that I say on here that I get wrong. So come on, come through. What are you waiting for? Get in there. Um, sorry. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, come watch us on Friday if you want to see a level six one shot and then a level seven second part of a one shot that is making it a two shot that is not confusing. I have to put these down. Um, all right. That's it. I feel very confused tonight. Are there any other announcements that we need to make, guys, before we dive into, like, level three stuff? Good to go. Okay. Cool. All right. So, technically speaking, we might do some stuff before the long rest happens. But, silly iPad. Tricks are for kids. We might do some of that before, um... We, we might do some of activities before the long rest actually occurs, but I will probably, if we need to, I'll split the videos up. So it's just going to keep our momentum forward to do our level up right now. So you guys, I don't know. I think three out of four of you are primarily utilizing um, Demiplane for your leveling. And then Kayla, I think, is a paper girly like myself. So we are going to look at that together. Um, but remember, guys, after the battle of level two, 
once you actually take your long rest, you will be going to level three, which means we again get to pull up our either demiplane system or our actual Daggerheart player materials. Kayla, do you have access to that already? If yeah. not, I can make it work if I need to. I got it. Okay, great. I got it. All right, fantastic. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I can uh, da, 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 share this real quick because I'd like to be able to. There we go. Yes. All right. Character slideshow is going to go down real quick. Oh, nope, not that. Uh, this one. Haha. <laughs> okay. Great. So. I'm sharing on my screen the class package for the Bard. So as part of this document, it shows you, gosh, I'm just struggling with this today. Okay. Remember that for Daggerheart, at least now in open beta, who knows if this is going to be the case later, but if you scroll down in your character sheet items, down at the bottom of your second page, you can see your level up bars. And remember that circling back to what we've been doing before, and I know that it says 1.4.1 at the bottom, by the way, I promise it just is because it hasn't been updated. So it is, mm -hmm. it is the one that was released in the latest package. But that first column says levels two through four. We've already experienced what happened at level two, but we're staying inside of there for level three, okay? So we're going to disregard the first part in the gray that says at level two, take an additional experience um, because you're not going to we're not at level two, but we are going to move into the lighter gray section here. So when you level up at level two, you would have already selected two of these options and they should still be present on your sheet. Right, Kayla? Great. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to get to choose two available options from the list below for level three and mark them. So does anybody have an idea of what they've chosen for their characters, by the way? Have y'all already made your selections? Anybody want to talk about them? Ted or yeah, yeah Steven. Um, so uh, I went ahead and leveled up my um, minor and major. Wow. Uh, thresholds, okay. Um, to get it to where I could possibly not take any damage. Um, wow. and then I gave Ted, uh, or no, Bill, uh, evasion. I increased his evasion. Ooh, so, nice. incredible. A, Cause that is his health dodgy. pool, right? No, um, stress stress. Is, stress is his health pool. Um, but, uh, evasion will hopefully keep him from getting hit. <laughs> incredible a slippery rooster says cheat uh, screen <laughs> mm -hmm. quick like a butterfly it's one of his experiences that's so interesting i will just say i think that when i've leveled characters because we've done like these level five and stuff and um i have never really done a lot with those damage thresholds so interesting choice interesting choice i mean i i i actually do the major but i have felt oh i can't do multiple of these you know what i mean so Good yeah, time. I was excited to see how it uh, affects combat later. Yeah, you at some point you're basically taking no damage because the severe bumps by itself. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, let's move over to Jimbo. What did you What did you choose? So I'm currently looking at uh, leveling up my experience or increasing my experiences uh, by by one each or for two of them, uh, and then let's see. Uh, if there's one other one. Oh yeah, increasing my major threshold. So okay. somewhere kind of both. Yeah, that's usually where I kind of align myself in terms of when I've leveled up. That's usually what mine has looked like. So yeah, and for and my like my, my uh, major and my minor are fairly close. To, I mean, six apart, but at the same time, my armor does eight. So I'd, at oh, that that's point, good. That's a good point about strategy. Is that when you are leveling up your damage thresholds, you kind of want to ensure that they're not spaced too far because your armor has to be able to account for the difference. If, for example, your severe is 30 and your major is five, 
You would have to spend 25 worth of armor slots effectively to be able to get down there. So it gets a little bit tricky. Um, that's a, that's a really, that's a really, I had not thought of that before actually, but that's really a good, a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely something smart to think of. I did something similar. That's one of the reasons I did both minor and major Mm -hmm. is it bumped my minor to three, my major to eight. So that's five. And that's exactly what my armor class is. Yeah. Um, and then my major is eight and my severe Mm -hmm. is 18, which is 10. So it's just two of my armor classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super smart. Very interesting. Yeah. Go ahead. Steven, did you know? Uh, did you know what you did for your domain card? Are we looping back to that? Oh yeah, I totally forgot about my f- domain card. I think we'll that talk was... about the domain cards at the very tail end, so that we're going in okay. order with okay. what we select. But yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, and that'll give you time to pick it out if you haven't already. Oh yeah, yeah, have. of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Kayla, do you want to go or do you want to save you the best? Save the I don't uh, want to save you for last. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh gosh, my goodness. <laughs> no, um, I increased two experiences by one. So Swamp Princess is now a plus three. By Royal Decree is a plus two. And then I added a hit point. Ooh, incredible. Right. We love to see it. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Oh, good job. Okay. And then uh, Chris, tank. And then I took uh, a stress slot so I could yell wings before I get hit every time. Uh-huh. And then uh, uh, yeah. I got in my traits because uh, my main traits are strength or I mean agility and presence. But I feel like tank role play wise needs to be a little strong. So I added uh, strength and then um, instinct because I feel like instinct shows up all the time. It does. It does. Yeah. This, so again, because we get to talk, you guys are at the point now where y'all can start talking philosophy of tabletop RPG. So if y'all want to know a piece that comes up a lot, it's traits are not created equal. No, um, absolutely not. There are ones that you use way more frequently and ones that you use less. In Dungeons and Dragons, for example, the only reason to do constitution is for that health boost. But that doesn't apply apply here but no one's ever rolling constitution checks unless you're getting poisoned yeah, it's just it just saves really yeah. yeah exactly constitution saves so in this system if we're doing a comparison between what this system would look like i would expect that we're probably gonna see a huge number of instinct checks because that really is our wisdom perception all of those things about sensing the world you're probably going to see a fair amount of presence checks which is your ability to charm and and i'm actually using that as your sense of self to a bit yeah i think i think that that's a good way to look at it too is it's like not just like charming and stuff but like yeah yeah yourself like how confident are you in yourself it's your presence it's like who you are yeah and i think especially in like this tabletop it's very focused around world building and stuff so presence is is one that i'm like ooh. I did not think of that at all when I was building Wilhelmina, my level five uh, druid, great fairy druid. I did not think of her presence at all. I have fixed that for the level six version of her because it just doesn't come up as much, I feel like, in Dungeons and Dragons. Plus, you get so many additional smaller bonuses, like your, you know, your proficiencies and stuff. So... This one, you really build into those six, and I, I can see how yeah. it's so dynamic. You really can make a character who is just personality-driven, you know, just role-play-driven. Um, uh, and then agility um, uh, also probably going to come up, guys. It's just it's dexterity-based ones come up a lot. So um, Another thing that I saw looking into, like, when I was making a... a characters was the items like they do give like uh kind of like how kayla got that special thing for her armor Uh um they make something for like weapons that you can use to like make it use your presence instead of like your strength or agility so like if you want to use like a different weapon that normally uses strength you can apply that to it you can like flavor it now that your character has this big ass great sword even though they're a funny bard (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's true. We've actually talked about that a little bit because one of the reasons that um, you guys happened upon a dude with a blunderbuss is because Chris has an interest in potentially 
using a blunderbuss. So uh, I build stuff into the world that people express interest in. And so I wanted it to be there in case, you know, just in case someone chose to take it. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, and you're not adding anything to proficiency, right? You only do that at level two. Uh, at level two, yeah. yes. For now, at level two, it does it automatically for you. It, it says it at the at the piece of it. Yes. Um, at level five, it doesn't. Maybe you have to choose it. Yeah. 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 The next bump up, you'll have to make that choice. Yeah. Absolutely. Like you can actually see on the in again in the in that column levels two through four in the dark gray, it says at level two, take an additional experience and increase your proficiency by plus one. That's why you did it at level two. But it's not it's not actually a choice down here in these options. Um, to yeah. be more correct, I guess at level five, you do get another one, but you can pick another fourth one. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the la levels five to seven column, not only do you get it automatically in the dark gray, but then you also have the ability to bamp it. So crazy. Um, Why? Before we move on from this, because it looks like everybody has their check boxes selected, I do need to ask one more question, which is that for those of you who did increase your traits at all, I want to make sure that we all made sure that we were increasing two unmarked character traits, which means they were ones that you did not increase at level two. Um, if you you guys are in demi plane, which means that it's already making sure you can't, so you're fine. Yeah. And, yeah. And Kayla didn't select this. This is more of a point for our audience, guys. Anybody who's watching this, you know, the, the mechanism is you can't, between the levels two and four and between the levels five and seven, you cannot, and so on and so forth, you can't increase a trait the same time. Um, so if I scroll up here, you can see that when I, when I level up, if I chose to upgrade finesse, I'd bubble in that little option. And then when I got to level three, because it's in that same column, that bubble already exists. I can't bubble it again, which is why for me, probably never will my characters upgrade traits more than once in the columns because I focus on the ones that do the most for me. So that's how I feel too, yeah. Excellent. Just leave the other ones. I can be weak on those ones. Yeah, exactly. I love a good negative one in yeah. something. Let me be bad at something. That's fun for me. Um, yeah. My knowledge is negative one. And a lot of times in my character, my knowledge is negative one because I'm a poor note taker. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't remember what we were talking about. It is very yeah. accurate to my character and myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's a really good way to just be like, I'm trying to zone out here, you know. I'm I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not being the note taker. I should I have the opposite problem where I sometimes am like, I'm playing a stupid guy, but then I am the note taker, so I just have to slide my notes over to other people like here it is. Answer. <laughs> like answer, you know. Um also highlights, right? I love that every time you come in you put the little cats. It's just fantastic. Um, Those are dogs. No, yeah, I like the the dogs, K, the K K nine group. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Um, so we have those chosen, which means real quick, the next piece is down below that. At every level, you are going to increase your severe damage threshold by a plus two. So locate your severe threshold uh, and go ahead and make sure that you're erasing what you already have in there, adding two to it. And replacing that value everybody and again demi plane makes this <laughs> super easy because it automates it for you kayla are you all good on your side mm -hmm. and again kayla exactly. i want to remind you i always do paper i mm -hmm. Wilhelmina, she was entirely on paper i i created mm -hmm. her in demi plane only so that i could put the link in our discord for people um lastly yeah, i do both yeah, it's good Should to have both. I yeah. actually love a good check my work because if if I demi plane, yeah, if so I have, yeah. I know I'm a nerd, but I was like, I was at the end, I was like, did I get my answers right? To <laughs> like comparing it to the text, and I did. It was great. Um, Does the key match? <laughs> it did. Yeah, exactly. So go to the flip to the back of the book, and you're like, I did get a seven there. Excellent. Um, Lastly, though, choose a new domain deck card at your level or lower. So this is important. Sometimes I've seen situations where that level, I'm like, I don't really care about 
any of these. You could still take one from the lower rungs. You don't have to take uh, the level three options. But you know, if we're looking at the bard, for example, you're gonna, ooh, and let's just scroll out a little bit. Uh, because remember, these player packages are excellent because they have all the things that you need to play that character. Um, but for that, at the, you as a bard have access to the Grace and the Codex domain decks. At level one, you know, you have three of each. At level two, you get your uh, two of each. And at level three, you get another two options of each. Have you looked through these at all, Kayla, yet? Take your time then, right and we'll, we'll, look, we'll come to you at the end then, okay? Um, so I know that, Stephen, you've picked yours. Do you want to talk about what you have selected? So, yeah. Um, and this is another thing I love about this game is it all, it's all flavor. So what I've chose is the corrosive projectile. Um, you make a spell cast roll against a target within far range, and on its success, mark a stress and deal D6 magic damage using your proficiency. The target's difficulty value is then temporarily reduced by one, which like makes it easier for everyone to oh, hit once God. I hit that person. That's so um, annoying. Ugh. <laughs> so, um, but how I'm flavoring it, because I really don't, I mean, I feel like, Ted does use spells, but not in like a traditional sense of like a magic man. Um, he like uses things that are kind of utensily, uh, like his oh. bugs and stuff like that. So he's just gonna um, throw a fork? <laughs> I think what he's gonna do is he's gonna take eggs uh, and poke a hole and drain the yolk and then pour corrosive stuff inside the eggs and then hurl eggs at people. Oh my god, I love this. Guys, if we have two central themes to our game, it's Southern and eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're They're just- bad eggs, so We're just- Cracker Barrel is our theme. <laughs> I'm gonna bring some Titty Boy in here. Yeah, you gotta help <laughs> us out, man. I gotta balance it out, yeah. Yeah, listen. Okay, I love that. Um, just as a reminder for those of you who don't know, when it says the target's difficulty value is temporarily reduced by one, temporarily, what that means in Daggerheart is that it is a temporary condition. When that is placed upon an adversary, what that means is it will last until the GM, I, spend a fear to remove it. That sucks because a fear is two action tokens. So you're getting mm. rid of a lot of my money there, or I just have to live with having a lower difficulty, which uh, I hate. So or it's um, possibly even like a special ability of a uh, adversary, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's true. Abs. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So. So um, I, have, um, yeah. I have a question about one of these spells. Absolutely. Let's take a look. Okay. So it's. Rune circle. Use an action to mark a stress and create a temporary magical circle on the ground around you. Any creature in melee range of this circle or who enter melee range of this circle take 2d12 magic damage and are pushed at the end of their action. But if it's around me, so I'm in it, I have enemies around me and I cast it, don't I get damage too? No. No, 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 no. The, no. the assumption. So I mean to it. The ass oh, but you want to know what? Honestly, it does say any creatures. To me, right. this is a great part for survey feedback, Kayla. You have found okay. it. You're the tech. Oh, I found it. Um, because it doesn't say any, because generally speaking, verb, this is where again, Kayla, you're really good at finding these things because a rules lawyer here would say a few different things. One, they might say this would hurt me too. But another one, another person would probably make sure that it was very clear. Your friends cannot be in this circle with you. Yeah, this is not helping your friends. Yeah. Yeah. So remember when we played Baldur's Gate and you kept like murdering me to AOE? Baby, it's back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's back. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Took that one on um, John Blackstone. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Chris, Chris took that too. for his um, his magician nice. character is wizard in our level, okay. our mm -hmm. higher ones. It's incredible. He hasn't used it yet. Mm -hmm. Wait, I thought I took it. <laughs> I have levitation. I had, um, you have yeah, levitation? Terrence was uh, helping me out and I didn't want to hurt him. Yep, that's true. He's saving my life. 
yeah. But this, guys, is just for anybody watching. This is the Codex Domain at level three. The Grimoire Book of Corvax is what we're talking about. And you can see it on your screen. So, okay. Is that the one you're choosing or were you just still looking? Mm, I don't know. I'm still looking. Because, right. like, Recant seems cool, yeah. but I think Fireball is cooler. And that's only oh, other. Fireball oh, also, are. like, is just so synonymous with, like, any tabletop RPG. Listen, you <laughs> save save your choice for last. I love that we're, like, bouncing in with you for, like, hey, let's take. It's very thematic. All right. Um, then let's go ahead and who wants to jump in next? My warrior or my rogue? I can go ahead. Uh, there's two I'm still kind of trying to decide between on uh, mine's either invisibility or chokehold. Uh, invisibility does what it says. Uh, you <laughs> make a spellcast roll. And you touch a creature. doesn't have to just be myself. And on a success, I mark a stress and they become hidden for an hour. Uh, or until uh, I like, cast this specific spell again, or until that target makes an attack or a spell cast roll. So if I say turn uh, um, Bill and turn Bill invisible, he might not you know attack anything, might not do any spell cast rolls, but he may do other shenanigans. Mm -hmm. You know, can just send him off. Uh, but and then the other one, chokehold. Um, if I'm hidden or hidden, I can successfully put myself behind another creature that is about my size. I can use an action to then mark a stress to put them in a chokehold or a equally uh, compromising position to make them temporarily vulnerable. Oh my uh, every, gosh. But I mean, it, it's a lot of ifs and very situational, so that's what makes me kind of iffy on it. But uh, you but, were hidden but, uh, a lot in this game. Yeah. Well, well, have to, well, I've been hidden like four times maybe, but I also have to like then position myself behind someone that's my size or smaller. <laughs> Yeah, well, but dwarf awesome is times. regular size. I would say it just wouldn't Wait. work against a giant. Yeah, that's fair. I wasn't sure like how how like I didn't I, look too yeah. much into the sizing because we're all kind of more or less small group. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess um, that is interesting. <laughs> but to me, right, I would say, oh wow, an interesting point. I I always consider dwarfs to be like a normal size or medium size like uh, build because they're wide. You know? They're not like they might be a little bit shorter, but they're stocky guys. Like they're still built kind of big. Where, where the other dogs at? Let's right. I don't know. Tell them to get their asses in here. No, I'm um, um, so the other, the other part to that ability, not just making it's them vulnerable, so but it also it's makes it every attack roll against them while they're vulnerable adds two d six to the damage roll. So if I do that, anyone else that comes in and attacks could deal extra damage. Yeah. Um, but that also like. Uh, have to mark. You have to go through. No, spend two actions just to then get someone in that state or at that point. Like, but the payoff like, though, two d six for every person. If if at that point, y'all none of us make you a uh, failure or a uh, roll of fear. So that's is, when you can then hop in. Yeah, but yeah. this is honestly where guys, you you can like make these builds where your party. I think Daggerhead is really interesting because your party could really get. <laughs> crazy if you all coordinated together and you're like okay we're building a party that does not roll fear you know you just get re-rolls or you get ramp ups and stuff like that and choke hold works as soon as jimbo choke holds everybody just i'm taking my action i'm taking my action i'm taking my action murder you know um, if, if i'm a little more certain on possibly leaning towards a guardian later yeah. that might be helpful just to pick just to get a little bit of guardian so i can like you know get the attack of opportunity stuff because yeah. then that can help really kind of like ground ground a person does Guardian seem to you guys like it's maybe the best multi-class option? Oh, you mean Warrior? Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm Warrior's sorry. I'm the attack yeah, sorry. Okay. yeah, Warrior's the one I was thinking of. Honestly, it's just dip a little bit into melee for Daggerar, you know? Always have just a little bit of offensive. Um, So just real quick, because we're looking at this card, do, do the Ancestries actually dictate a size? I, I haven't really seen anywhere that specifically calls out your size. I don't like, either. You know, even with yeah, a lot of a lot of times it'll it just mentions that like this is a range of height that this race can be, but it doesn't actually like say um, this is small, this is medium, this is large. Like well, also like to me suggestion, and I want to see how people feel about this. I almost would say in this card. Get rid of the about your size thing. A chokehold can be multiple things, you know? Like you have a dagger pressed to their neck, you know? Well, I assume that also means they don't want a, like, you know, like a 
two inch fairy chokehold in a dragon. <laughs> yeah, but but like but I say find the flavor to do that, right? Like he's got a he's got a his little fairy rapier underneath the the dragon's claw and he's like, itch, ouch, ouch, you know, like I don't know. Something of like I get it's not an actual chokehold, but like I don't know. If you don't have sizes related to your ancestries, I almost am like, where? why are the sizes coming up, you know? Um, just a thing to think about for surveys. Mm -hmm. Good point, yeah. Okay, um, well, you know, you can you can choose. You, have you formally chosen one yet, Jimbo, or are you still no. thinking about it? At the moment, I'm going with Chokehold, but I'm going to try to see if I can find info on the size thing right now. I think Chokehold is so sick. Also, I just love the Midnight Domain. I am not an edgy girl, but there is something about that card deck that really sings to me. I want to know the, all about this little dude. Yeah, there's the, the one of them is like an Unseen Servant kind of thing. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was building a level 10 character just fooling around the other day, and I built a uh, sorcerer, I think it's what it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, with the midnight and the magic in there, I, it was, it was kind of dirty. <laughs> a little bit dirty. It was, it was mean. <laughs> Dagger Master. I like making main characters. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I, th I think that that's, I think that's fantastic. I really would, guys, like someone on this channel at some point to start just, like, cranking out crazy builds, and then we'll have a whole separate video thing that we do where we just show wild-ass builds, you know what I mean? Um, I would love to do a tier list. Yeah, Chris has got to do the tier list. I'll be watching that shit all the time. That is, his, tier list. That is his whole jam. That Cereal is... brands, I don't care what it is. I want to tear it. I'm down. We can do it one day. We can get on there. We can oh tear my it god, out. that would be such be a fun. good like yeah. duo. You guys like y'all are both anime tier listy dudes, right. actually. So I did find something in the full like player manuscript. Like I'm, I think it's on. I'm just on Dracana at the moment, but I think it's going to be mentioned each one. Like for Dracana, it specifically mentions they are in the. Uh, they are large in size. Oh, and then okay. I don't know if that's the classification there or they're just describing it. <laughs> uh, right? But, I'll, I'll have to like, I think I'll have to look a little bit. But I, 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 I didn't remember that. If, if, there, if sizes are coming up in this kind of a context, and I forgot that I've seen some of it before, Chokehold is the first one that made me think of it. I almost think you need to have sizes on the Ancestry cards, you know? And I, I think, think they're, they're trying to move like, away from that. Well, and some of these, like, it looks like there's, like, it varies, but it's like, you know, you might do it, like, play a kid version of one and they're small, but you play an adult right. and they're large. I, I think that it's, I think what they need to do is have you choose, is, like, make it a choice in the, like, the mm -hmm. selection of your ancestry. Is like, if you're playing this ancestry and it's a fairy that can range from two foot to seven foot, you need to dictate what size you are so that way it can dictate what you do throughout the course of your story that you're telling. So we we more so then are leaning on the side of still keep it ambiguous in terms of the card and then at your table though as your as the GM and the player it's kind of a an a compromise of what are we seeing here? Is that what we're kind of talking yeah, about? Yeah, because I, I, th I think that's always super important. It's it's just like the the lines and bells. Like you want to like communicate as a GM uh, to your players to be like, hey, I just want to make sure that you're not abusing this character and making uh, something that is, you know, uh, not fun for other people mm -hmm. sitting at the table with you. Yeah. Um, that's and true. Like, but by like having that conversation i think that that can kind of cover that yeah no that's that's absolutely true i uh, i i can see that and again all of tabletop rpg is always just a compromise between a gm and a player y'all that's that's why rules lawyering happens at tables i'm not interested in and at mine because i'd rather go into other conversations but we I know. like the argument. I'll always argue in rules lawyer. I don't bring it up, but I fight other people that try to. It's like, I'm like, well, actually, <laughs> that's the only reason I like having the only reason I like to have it sometimes concrete because, like, if you go through this like long plan, then you finally go in to enact it, that's and then you're just like caught in this technicality, and you're just like, well, I wish I would have known this half an hour ago before I, you know, spent my past few turns getting here. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, you do need to understand the rules of engagement. That's what makes it a game. If you don't want to have rules, then you can just like pretendsies, but like mm -hmm. who would win at LARP 
if you didn't know, okay, a touch isn't out, you know? Like, you're just like, no, uh, my sword was bigger, so I won. I don't LARP, I'm just saying. I know some of the rules. <laughs> you know nothing about how it is. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on from that. Um, uh, all, all right, so so Jimbo's going chokehold, love it. You know, we'll keep that in mind if we encounter a moose. Um, <laughs> Chris, you're level three awesome. warrior. Um, have you selected yours? Do you know what you're going with? You have blade and bone. Yeah, I got mine um, all set up. Great. Let me go on my character sheet real quick. Yeah. Easier to see everything. Uh -huh. So I have like a kind of a synergy going on with my build. So level two, I took ferocity. And then that one is when I deal damage to an enemy, I can spend two hope and then however many health slots I take from them, I can add to my evasion and it lasts until the next time I get hit. So right now I have plus three, which still lasts through long rest the way it's written. So, um, yeah, he did this in the fight right. with Cassandra. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That way, um, that way when I yell wings too, I get an extra two. So I go from like now 14 evasion to 19. And then, so for this next one, I took Scramble. So once per short rest, when an enemy in melee range would deal damage to you, you can avoid damage entirely and safely move out of melee range of the enemy. Oh, so God, I can keep yeah. this buff going a little bit yeah. longer. Scramble is so good. I took it for uh, Emrys for the level level six characters. Yeah, so if you happen to roll higher than a 19, I get a jail out of get out of jail free card each time. Yeah, yeah, I actually once remember for a short this rest. Now. Yeah, for short rest. Yeah, but that's twice a day. And as we know, yeah, like per day, you don't, you, you may, you know, you might have a big combat once and a big combat at the end of the day, but you don't have like, it's not like we could, we could, we could keep you in constant combat. It'd be fun. We'd do a dungeon for it, but it'd be crazy. That sucks, Chris. I gotta be real honest with you. I don't love that for me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's all good. It's fantastic. That's an incredible build. Also, these cards still are some of my favorite because it looks like a rose. Ugh. Okay. All right, Kayla, have you chosen? Yeah. I did. I went with the book of Corvax just okay. because the fireball, yeah. very far range. I have ice spikes from Book of Ava in the very far range. Never use it because no one's ever that far from me but also the rune circle it's you know so much any damage. creatures in melee range and somebody i'm not gonna name any names likes to beat up on me steven and so that can push <laughs> all the characters away i would never Listen, we, we just, it, it, for anybody who's watching and doesn't know, we just got out of an arc in her homeland. I had to abuse the frog a little, you know? Okay, but the rivets, like, in the forest, in the Sablewood forest that were all over me that wouldn't leave me alone. I didn't build them as rivets. Talk to Darrington Press about it, okay? Mm -hmm. They just saw a pretty lady and they were like, we must murder her, you know? Um, yeah, I'll be honest, Kayla, I, when I was looking through these, uh, for talking about Chris's wizard, actually, I was like, I'm rune circle all day, baby. I'm rune circle all day over fireball. The damage is bumping. It's multiple targets. It keeps me safe and it's called cool shit. I'm using that. Mm -hmm. But the and mystic you tether is sick. You can make people forget things. That's pretty cool. I love it. And levitation. And again, I'm a golden god. So anyway, <laughs> all right. So, um, so let's go ahead and um, th that should be it. So everybody has their, their character all built up, right? Mm. Okay. So I do want to remind you guys that we are at the mercy to Darrington Press. Hey, if any of y'all are watching this, stop. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but um, if we start the next session in 1.4.2, we will stay in 1.4.2 because I expect to be able to run the Marauders of Windfall in two sessions at a maximum. If it runs longer than that, I am in trouble uh, because I got to, I have to run that table a lot soon and it's four hour blocks. So I can stretch it out for our home game to like two sessions. I'm allowing myself that caveat, but I cannot get carried away. Um, so, all right, cool. Well, then 
That sounds great. So we have leveled up our party. Does anybody have any questions for now? And we're just picking up where we left off. No long rest. Anything else? We're gonna do. We're we're gonna see what people want to do. I say before we do that, though, let's go ahead and because it's been a little while since we've done it, and you guys are level three characters. Do y'all want to go ahead and intro? We can do our introductions that we usually do. Yeah. So I'll start real quick. I'm Rachel. I am your GM or your dagger master. <laughs> and um <laughs> and i you know that this is this is usually where i am sometimes we trade out seats but it's been me for the most part and then we have steven tonight hi i'm steven i'm playing tedios i'm a ridge born mixed ancestry uh a good point to bring up is after one point uh 1.4.2 they changed how that works so now i'm actually uh Simeon Dwarf as my uh, mixed ancestry. You are just um, a wacky, wavy, inflatable arm flailing tube man of a character. You just mm -hmm. never, I'd never. Be right on your feet in a beta, you know? The Ridge Bros <laughs> will become one. The Ridge Bros <laughs> will become one. I mean, it makes sense. The oh dwarves live in the end, Mountain. mountain. Um, there's some, there's some, some mixed ancestry back there. Uh, I'm a ranger. I'm beast bound. And I got a lovely little uh, Wilbur or Bill. And he uh, takes care of me. It's a little Bill. He's so cute. Mm -hmm. Little Bill. Oh my gosh, I hadn't made that connection yet, and I love it. And there's Wilbert. I'm trying to get the characters popping up on screen, guys. I am not fixing this in post. I hate fixing stuff in post. I dare so like you. <laughs> you will just have a slight delay. If you want to see the monkey, go back. If you want to see the chicken, there he is. All right. <laughs> then We're we waiting. have. <laughs> then we have Justin. Uh, yep, I'm um, Justin. I am playing Jimbo, the Ridgeborn Dwarven Rogue. Uh, that, 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 that's me. I, I hit stuff with pickaxe. It sure does. Uh, uh, a stone pillar uh, sitting right over there off screen got whacked by you last week. Uh, I cannot believe that was only a week ago. Wild. Um, crazy. All right. And then we have Kayla. Uh, I'm Kayla. I play Anora, who is a princess, and she's a highborn bard. Absolutely. Ribbit bard. Yeah. yeah. Ribbit bard. Sorry. No, she's a frog. Good. She's a frog. <laughs> and then we have Rogue. <laughs> Rogue Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. I play Tanker Bell, the uh, warrior, fairy warrior. Uh, I also changed my ancestry because uh, it's beta. Um, so now I am human for the adaptability. Ooh. So, uh, I use my experience and I fail the roll. I can mark a stress and then re-roll. And then you have to take the next result. Oh, cool. I can't wait yeah. till 1.5 means y'all all have to build Which, them again. When I, uh, <laughs> leveled up, I didn't pick experience because as a human, I get to roll it again if I fail. So That's I feel like the point. number doesn't matter as much. Wow. Man, we, I'm so I'm glad we did this. I just be in the shower thinking about this game now, yeah. Oh Welcome. my god. <laughs> I did it, you guys. Like, it's like, addicting. Yeah. It's addicting. Okay. I don't know what I was thinking about in the shower Chris was talking about. I was thinking about how we didn't loot um Cassandra's body. Mm. And I bet she had gold. I, I, was in there. I, I too yeah. thought of this in the shower. And uh she <laughs> did have something. But I but yeah. here's the thing. I actually kind of blame myself for for that because it had been a long stream. I'm trying to keep us moving and stuff. And so actually, because you brought it up, I was kind of going back and forth in my head and I was like, maybe it's- Am I gonna wash on my shore? Uh, oh, yeah. like a, one of the child of the children ribbons that were following us just grab it along the way. Like, well, not her, her body, <laughs> not her body, but her dagger. We just have weapons for days, you guys. Yeah, she she didn't have any money on her or anything. She's she's poor. Uh, she's a yeah. Poor. She's poor, poor. Yeah, she you're did. the only rich person in this entire city, in order. What do you yeah. need money if you're like you know resurrecting this god thing? That's exactly right. She uh, well Fair. also she was like Shadow King. Yeah. Yeah. Monetary system. Just to be clear, also, and I love that these. Thing will provide. <laughs> daddy <laughs> sky daddy mm -hmm. yeah um just dark sky daddy dark sky daddy i 
I think it's fun to like give my players a lot of GMs have this huge veil of obscurity and I get that and it's fun I do keep that a lot of the time but I also think it's fun to like tell players a little bit more about stuff Cassandra was going to sacrifice herself at the end of that combat um so like that's that moment that she had where she looked at the opus tree and she had like fear in her eyes a little bit and uncertainty and she was calling herself she had such little faith and stuff is because she was straight up like i gotta gank myself at the end of this um mm -hmm. so she was dead either way she didn't bring a lot of money because she wasn't playing the slot machines you know mm -hmm. um but she did bring a dagger so a child absolutely can can do that for you guys. I love that. Yeah. You guys, uh, people in the audience, people who will watch this in the future on YouTube, y'all get the, the deep, dark secrets here in the first part of this, of these things, you know? All right, guys. Um, so I'm dive. sorry to interrupt, but, um, I have to let you all know my You're wife is it? baking cookies in the background and it smells so fucking good. And all I want to mm. do is get up and eat those fucking things. Sorry. Can you get one? Tangent. I'll let us uh, stop you. Go get one. I think, I think they're just so hot. Off I would there. love to live vicariously nice. through you eating a hot cookie on stream, honestly. So I will, uh, my mouth <laughs> immediately filled with saliva. Mm. They're so good. Brandy's cookies are so fucking good. Are they the ones <laughs> with the like three kinds of chocolate chips? And a little sea salts on top. Oh god. <sighs> that's that's a spicy meatball. Okay, so very briefly as a recap that we I do not need to give much at all. You know, we have closed out our rivet arc of level two. At the end of, or during our last episode, you all had made your way to the rites of Newmorn. You had confronted Cassandra Bloodstone, who was a effectively a cleric to um, the Shadow King, the Sky old Daddy. Uh, Sky Daddy, the <laughs> the old ancient and evil aligned. Or you mean a seraph? Yeah, she is a seraph. I mean, she really wasn't is the problem. She was a mortal hunter. That was what she was. She's an actual yeah. adversary in the book. A mortal hunter. So I'm saying cleric not as a class. She was just like betrothed. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, that was her, that was yeah. her husband, you know. That was her man. That was her man. Mm, yeah. Out there providing. Out there providing. Yeah. yeah, she's, you know, she making him lunches, bringing her, her little frogs to eat. It was a good time. Um, little babies. Little babies. A little snack. A little breakfast. Um, but she, the blood of his enemies. The yeah. usurpers. The usurper blood. It's, you know, it just doesn't get better than that. Um, but Cassandra had orchestrated effectively uh a process of usurpation. I don't think that's how you say it, but she was good. She was going to whole ass retrieve the throne from the a a coup. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. She was going <laughs> to. It's so funny to me also because Critical Role does coup a lot, but it's a pigeon thing and I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> anyway, um, so she she had planned a coup yeah she absolutely had although in her mind she was just fixing the coup that had occurred when the fiddle family had rose to power years and years ago a thousand years ago effectively uh with your bastard ass ancestors no, no this, she was good <laughs> she was a good lady <laughs> like the sight of pharaoh was beautiful um <laughs> And so during the course of the combat, uh, the, the group here, our party, which guys, it's soon you are going to need to figure out a party name because you're starting to gain a reputation. So be thinking each of you of a name for your party, because at some point that is, that comes for all heroes. And at some point it's coming for you guys. Um, so, okay. <laughs> so, uh, this party of be about us being short. Short Kings. Mm -hmm. the, sh the Short Kingdom. <laughs> um, like, so, uh, but the party had all banded together and disrupted the ritual, the cur cur 
Kermit's chosen. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> wild jean screen. Absolutely wild. Incredible. I love it. It's so good. Again, my favorite thing to do whenever Muppets come up is to be Miss Piggy uh, with my just fantastic impression. Hi-ya! It's very good. You're welcome. All right. You have a legit Miss Piggy. Hi-ya! Yeah. <laughs> That's the only word I can say, but it's very good. Um, okay. So, amazing. Said Jean Screen. <laughs> That's not going to make it to the YouTube edit. Um, so, we... <laughs> it probably will. Uh, I love shaving myself on the internet. Um, I keep getting distracted. I have to get through this recap. Okay. So, they had made them their way to the rights of Newmorn. Our... It, I'm not looking at your comments anymore, Jean Screen. I have to get through this. We, we, uh, I will in a second, I promise. They made their way to the rites of Newmorn. The unnamed band of adventurers fought off Cassandra and the coup that was occurring there, uh, disrupting the ritual and therefore only restoring a shade of what the Shadow King should have been. And in those final moments, they banded together to destroy him in his entirety. Uh, and through the sacrifice of not an individual but some bardic inspiration to the to the whole of her people each person bled just a bit just a, a small amount giving just enough of each of themselves to close off the gate to the circles below that had been tearing and ripping its way back into this the mortal realm um, the gate closed and sancta Fera, who had appeared and manifested in those final moments in closing the island in a bubble shooed everyone down through the escape tunnel tunnels, not really escape tunnels, but the path uh, underneath the channel back to the Warren Palace, you had left, but not before she had gifted Anora with a beautiful golden harp that was bladed on one side. Um, and then you had all absconded. Remember that you made your way back to the Warren Palace at that point most of the Ribbit community that had been summoned to the island, which was a significant portion, stayed there in the hatchery celebrating the return of the eggs, which some of them did, most of them did not know had even been stolen, but were excited to have been left alive in that moment. Your party first had, however, climbed to the top of the Warren Palace, palace looked across over the island to the rites of Newmorn, and seen there that blue orb uh, that was encapsulating the island flicker, fall, and those giant tides, the seas, crash and cover the rites of Newmorn. That is... It has effectively sunken like Atlantis at this point. Um, it is covered in water. The gate closed. You have well and truly finished a job. Um, but after that point, you had all taken a moment together with your party and then journeyed back down to the hatchery where you had found some of the ribbit folk had left the palace to return to their homes, be with their families. Most of the mothers of the 15, well, 16 eggs, just one of them destroyed, were still in the hatchery spending time with their, their egg, who they have not been able to see in weeks since the palace had closed off. And Honora had, in that moment, to make sure a liar was not made of her, um, she had pulled okay. out her harp and played the rites of new more no longer discordant a beautiful little adjustment she had made um to serenade not only the eggs but also the mothers in the room um i know also during some of this we had had jimbo saying he was gonna go take a look for miss loretta lovegrass i think was no oh was that oh. tedios and yes, doing that, I was going to find uh, not daffodil, daffodil. Was daffodil. I had to write daffodil mm -hmm. to get my uh, letters back. Daffodil's got them letters. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's I would say a sufficient recap for here. I know that Tank was there, like supporting Anora and uh, kind of looking after the crowd and everything, kind of invoking his Tank gar uh, not guardian, but um, I don't know, protector kind of side. Um, but the way that this is going to go, guys, is that we're going to wrap this up. So first, 
we're going to talk about anything that we want to tackle before the long rest. I will give you just one more piece of context and, and we're not going to role play every piece of this. I'll give you information. Okay. This is not going to be uh, the same as walking through areas as much as it will be isolated interactions. One additional piece though, Anora, when you had come back down from journeying up to the top, um, because it just makes sense that you would have needed a moment with your family. Um, I will say that as you were like in that room, your mother did find you and crash into you, hugging you and petting your head and sobbing, uh, you know, a, a lot of... I'm so glad to see you, darling. It's just so good to see you. Oh, I, I, I hope that you're all right. I really have to look after your sister. And she, when you glance the direction that her eyes go, you can see that Liliana is just kind of dazed, really. Um, just kind of holding herself and not really making eye contact with anyone. Um, your mother did like ask you holding your face and everything. Are you going to be all right, dear? Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, of course, go see my sister. Okay. Yes. She is going That's to fine. like kiss you on your forehead and hold oh. you in a very firm hug. Like that lasts mm -hmm. a full 30, 45 seconds. This is an incredibly long hug. We get these in our family, just mm -hmm. FYI. Those sound unrealistic to some people. This is real. Mm -hmm. uh, they happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she's going to hold you for a moment to make sure that you, you understand the weight of her love for you. And then kind of, you know, going over to Liliana, who briefly glances at you, but it's like her eyes just don't really connect with you. So aside herself she is and then they abscond up into the palace escorted by remember some of the ribbits that are in this congregation actually were some of the guards that were dismissed from service earlier and though they're in layman's clothes now in this moment knowing that florian is gone and knowing that people need people to step up you can see them kind of stepping up and like making sure to escort them so everyone is banding together um, they abscond. The other piece is at one point you see, well, it's not really at a point. Everyone around, there is, Anora, how would you explain the way that the people of Black Gum Hollow react to your station usually in your history? She just, I, if she's alone, and she's out and about, like they're nice, they'll buy her a drink and stuff. They're nice, they're friendly. Um, if she's with the whole family, it's just kind of like she's not, yeah. they don't pay attention. Yeah, so. so but they're all nice to her. They're, they're nice people. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the piece that I need you to understand now is that the switch up, the change is so significant in this moment. Mm -hmm. And you might not have been prepared for it and expected it, but remember, as you're, for example, walking through, that people are bowing low to you. Mm -hmm. And people, some of the children are like pulling at their mom and kind of like staring almost in that way of like awe where it's so filled with awe that there is a little fear behind it. When you're playing your harp, everyone quiets and gathers near and around and is quiet just speaking in hushed tones. Some of them like reach out and touch just the hem of your like clothing and stuff. I need to remind you that what they just witnessed was a miracle. They saw a saint. They, what, you know, a religious figure of myth come around you, walk only with you, and then bequeath to you a weapon. You know, so your position here Kira. has changed. What was that? I said full hero. Full hero. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just, I feel that that's important to make sure that we are understanding in this moment. Tank, because you're in the room and you're kind of monitoring the situation and you're good with kids, you do see at one point that a child that has kind of, put themselves to the back of the crowd and it's kind of 
looking down into their lap and you see that he um a very small boy is is holding a dagger a twisted dagger that has a blade that kind of coruscates back and forth oh that's not the right word sorry that's a word from a book that i just read <sighs> anyway it's what, a what was the word you said oh coruscates it means sparkling anyway this one doesn't you just get lost over that <laughs> this doesn't sparkle it twists <laughs> this is anyway um it, 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 he is holding a twisted dagger okay um you see this yeah that's a problem uh can I go up to the kid and be like, hey, man, what you doing with that thing? Uh, what you doing there, bud? <laughs> we all look up. Oh, I'm, I was just I was just looking at it. You know, I, 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 um, I saw it on the island. You found it on the island? Just yeah. hanging around the uh, in the water? Yeah, I found it on in 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 the water, sir. Do you mind if I maybe took the dagger as I don't want you to hurt yourself and I give you something else for it? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to steal it or nothing, I promise. I was just I was just saw it. You could have it. You don't have to give me anything. Oh, it's okay. If I saw that I would have grabbed it too. Aww. Um He kinda like looks up and nods and he's gonna hand <laughs> you the, the dagger. And he kind of like pulls his hands back to himself. You see him like looking at your sword. At uh, you, what what do you carry at this point? I have a long sword. It yeah. is a long it's sword, a right? He's like looking at your sword. He says, "Whoa, you know, I saw I saw you over there and everything. You the way you chopped the way you chopped her head off was so cool." Yeah, she. Uh... <laughs> in my head i was like thinking of like the moment i was like i think i called her a hatless bitch or something like that everybody um, called her a hatless bitch y'all all were <laughs> like this did. hatless bitch in a dumb dress <laughs> that was... mm -hmm. but honestly that compared to the child watching you chop someone's head off the head chopping's the more alarming this is true. thing there. this is yeah. true Listen. but you know she uh, stuff happens um this was in the like heat of battle I you guys, this is like an adventure movie for him, you know? Like, he is, like, he is totally I, I suppose, too, in this world, right? it's a little more common. So, hi. Yeah, yeah right? Um, like, he's seen beheadings. He's also, a medieval by child. the way, you were talking about this child with a knife, and it made, immediately made me think of the video of, like, the little kid running by the pool. And he's like, it's what do you have? Them. And he's like, it's a knife! Yeah. And he's like, oh, no! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, look at our comments right now. Kid, what do you have there? A knife! <laughs> Hi, MC Cat. By the way, it's good to see you. <laughs> um, can I uh, pull out of my wanderer's bag? Maybe like a little toy sword for him, so Absolutely. that he too can someday be a badass adventure. Tell me about the sword. Is it just like basic? It's wooden. What? What is it? Yeah, I'm gonna go vintage wooden sword. Classic. Vintage. Can't go oh wrong with it. Nice um, oak. Can the can the, pom can the pommel be a, a molar, like just a big tooth? That's a genius idea. Like what if it's, <laughs> it's... Okay, fantastic. Incredible. He looks and he says, Did you kill the thing that had this tooth? Oh, no. It's a little compartment, actually. And when, it, when you're playing, if you happen to knock out a tooth, you put your tooth in there and... You'll get something nice from one of my fairies somewhere. You have fairies? Just fair, yeah, they're just around. They like teeth. I have so many don't, questions. Don't worry about it. You know, you'll okay. it'll make sense when it happens. When if I if I if I practice every day. When it happens, it'll make sense when it happens. <laughs> yeah, you put it in there. You'll get toys and shit. It'll Wakes make sense. Up, rolls over. Yeah. There's a fairy standing next to his bed. Where's the tooth? I need a, <laughs> At some point, I have to understand if this is actually happening in the world because, like. I'm getting so many disappointed kids on Christmas, like like imagery in my head. We got to be making this happen. We're gonna. In my mind, right? So in my mind, there is a pearlescent order, which is like a guild of tooth fairies out here in this world that have kind of like stations in major cities, kind of like a fighters guild or like a mages guild in Elder Scrolls. Mm -hmm. We've so, talked about you know. this a little bit. So in yeah, your yeah, yeah. mind, they are actually like coming if teeth are placed under the pillow you're not saying you're gonna do it you're instructing kids of how to do it and 
these are no. That's why I was like, a fairy will be around. Yeah, you know, because people are stationed in little areas, and that's their like jurisdiction. This makes. Jimbo's been wrecking his mind about it. He's like, how are you going to get back over there? Why are you lying to these kids? They're going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> that's why I was like, it might not be me because I don't have that like ability. This makes so but... much more sense. This makes so much more sense because I I knew about the pearlescent order. We've talked about it. I didn't know that they were doing that, and so now I get it. Like I thought you were like. Leading these kids I would down love to, crazy but it's like, place. yeah, it just would not make sense story wise. We got to get moving. Yeah. Level ten, you know, level ten. That's, yeah, that's, that's your whole I'll job. Have yeah. a, a way to do that, but instead of a pillow, it's a sword compartment. Yeah, listen, we live in a, uh, we make the own rules in our in this our adventure world. Um, all right, so perfect. He he is going to he he looks up at you and, he, and he's like holding the sword. This is so cool. Hey, um, sir, if I use this every day, do you think that someday I could be a hero like you? And then I could chop some heads off? Bad guys only. Yeah, bad guys only. You know, pre preferably hatless. We look at an aura hatless over there like, nervously. <laughs> well, uh, <Yeah>. Nice ladies. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Only the poor. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Only the impoverished. No, he's he he like is. It's to be business over here. He kind of like I, I'm going to say in this moment he's gonna like hold up the sword like he wants you to like train with him a little bit. Do you train? I would with love him to. A little bit? Okay. Like five yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Show you guys are doing. a couple moves. A couple fight stances. This and he grew up to be the general of the frog army. The end. Um, like so. <laughs> All right, perfect. So, you, Honora playing her harp, you know, you catch that out of the corner of your eye, but Tank is over there, like sword defending. Y'all are having this moment. Let's jump over to our other players. Um, Ted, I'm gonna be real. oh, yeah, go ahead. Ted, what was it that you wanted to do, real quick? Um, I was going to go locate uh, Miss Loretta Lovegrass, um, yeah. see if she was still in the room that we left her in, and if she wasn't in that room nearby, then I was going to lead her back to the rest of the people. Yeah, I will say that she, you know, you know that she was taken to guest quarters, and right. you, you will say that you can find the guest quarters just fine. And she, um, she is at this point, you know, just like fanning herself in a room and. Uh, she has there beside her. Y'all were looking for the same people, though, right? Because Daffodil and Loretta went together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Great. Fantastic. We can go out different doors and meet back up at the same place. Yeah. Y'all are like, <laughs> you find Daffodil, you find Miss Loretta. Y'all go down halls and y'all come to the same door. Y'all both like peer in out of either side, and there is Daffodil sitting there in a chair and. He has like his arms folded over his chest and his head is leaned back and he's just kind of drooling um, asleep. Miss Loretta is uh, resting there in the bed, um, full on like draped out. Okay. They are both snoozing. It's pretty late. Do we not wake him up? We can just go mm. grab our stuff, right? Mm, I mean, we we should probably still wake them up and let them know that like crazy isn't happening anymore. Loretta was walking with us before she kind of zombied out or whatever. Is she still like leashed up? Yeah, she was well, she... the rope around her like center, but yeah, she is roped. Yeah, she's oh. and Daffodil has the rope around his center. He's very much doing what Tank was doing. They are both like daisy chained together. It's a Daffodil and a daisy chain, you know. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll head over and I'll like untie the rope and kind of wake up, uh, Loretta. Uh, okay. And she, uh, Loretta, honey. Loretta, Miss, oh. Miss, Miss Lovegrass. Darling, you are. Or Mrs. Mrs. Lovegrass. Oh, honey, do I look like the kind to take a husband? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Also, strange moment to wake me up, dear. Uh, what are you doing? Where? Where? Am I? Oh my uh, god. A guest quarters. Um, I'm here to let you know that we, we, we stopped the bad things that were happening. And uh, everyone's in the, the hatchery if you want to come and join us. Slow down, handsome. What bad things that were happening? Um, 
I feel like maybe Anora can tell you about that a little bit better than me. But then, so there was a, the, a big egg and an evil bird inside of it. That Cassandra lady, we cut her head off. Um, <laughs> Are you? But she sees but she over also, your shoulder she, and she says, just to get this straight, bomb, head cut. I think that I'll stay right here for just now, if it's all the same to you. That's fair enough, fair enough. We do, I should let you know as well, unfortunately, the king has passed. Um, so... <laughs> oh my god, she... Man, you are doing a lot of really weird shit, Steven. Um, like, she... I was trying to, like, keep this Wait, light. Add, add to the weird... Uh, <laughs> like, as he's waking up, Loretta, I'm gonna be behind Daffodil, like, assuming Daffodil's in a chair. I'll just be standing awkwardly behind him. Just kind of put my hand on his shoulders to, like, kind of wake him up. Because uh, I know I'm standing in front of someone, especially if they have a weapon. Don't let them come out stabbing. God. So I'm behind him. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking need... I need... So I need Tedios. I need Tedios to make a, a, a presence check because, like, this is just wild what's just happened here. Oh, All the night? Crit, crit. <laughs> it's two fours. <laughs> it's a crit. Let's go. Oh, oh, I knew it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, take a hope. Take a hope. Um, oh, I do take a hope for crit. And clear a stress. You might as well, Jesus. Um, uh, and you, so, because because like literally, I was like, what does she do at this moment? I I thought maybe she was gonna fucking deck you one and then run uh -huh. out of the thing and mm -hmm. i was trying to figure out the complications of the rope um but like but uh but this okay. is easier thank god you succeeded you get to tell me what do you want to happen out of this interaction you get what you want and a little bit more you tell me what's happening here man you made things um, crazy. So i see the like sheer panic in her face yeah. and i'm like oh whoa oh, oh, whoa oh. Um, as bad as everything is, um, everyone else is doing okay. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Um, here, let me get that rope off around your waist, and I'll reach over and I'll untie the rope for her. Oh. Um, uh, but, but um, you know, last time we talked, we were having a conversation, and then suddenly you kind of zonked out. I just wanted to make sure that you were okay. Uh, oh. it, you know. Uh, oh, God. Oh, it's all coming back to me. Oh, no. Oh, did anyone take a portrait? No, please tell no. me nobody took a portrait. Oh, God. I don't think so. No, okay, no, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. it is the combination of you first. She, she, she remembers you, but it wasn't clicking in her stupor, but you taking the rope off of her, she remembered immediately. You were the kind young man who took her bag for her and carried it. Um, also, I assume that Bill is with you, probably, is Bill? Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. and, and then also talking about the stupor, it comes flooding back to her, and she, oh, God. And King, King Florian is dead. Where's Anora? Where's Liliana? Bedelia? Um, well, come with us. I'll, we can lead you there. Okay, absolutely. All right, so she's going to follow again. We're wrapping this up quickly. You know, we're not going to spend time on each one of these little social interactions, but she believes you. Daffodil, uh, Daffodil does basically whatever you say. We got Daffodil here in the corner. <laughs> like Daniel's just game for a lap, you know? Um, so absolutely gives you your letters back that you have and everything. Um, and uh, doesn't believe in the fog, but does accompany, you know, the whole time just being like, I find it hard to believe that there'll be that many people down there in the hatchery at this time of night, but I sure will come with you. <laughs> like just the full time down the way. Whatever she, you say to Daffodils, come on, but <laughs> He's like, I don't think I like the linkage. <laughs> Y'all head past like the, the 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 prison, the little jail cell, the guard, uh, the little. Uh, uh, yeah, we let him out, or she could. Who put me in the cage? Y'all do not pass that. We're not dealing with that tonight. You don't go to the prison. No, somebody else is dealing with the jail. Like, <laughs> yeah, 
it is something I had thought of, but it's not happening. To, oh, I mean, like, listen, I don't want to guide your story. If y'all want no, to let no. out the people who were imprisoned I, for missed it was, stuff, you can. It was... It was, it was jokey stuff. They'll handle that stuff on the tell end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because all those people will have woken up from their mist stupor and all of them are in there. I do like the scenery of him just rattling the cage like, let me out, let me out. <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So anything else that you guys are doing this evening like is there anything that y'all wanted to attend to wanted to tackle i just um, want to um, make sure caliper we can do tomorrow sure. is that fine yeah okay yeah absolutely we're having a sleepover with caliper everybody yeah. yeah and are you staying some of these mothers are staying in the hatchery overnight with their with their babies um and there are guards again laymen at this point and dressed not in finery but they are actually like taking position at both sets of doors and stuff it's well guarded are you all staying there in the hatchery or are you going to be gene screen and chat? Will Kevin be making a guest appearance? Kevin is a fan favorite, you guys. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm like, come back, guys. The action tracker has been in this whole time. No, oh my God. <laughs> he's the real big bad. Um, are you guys sleeping in the hatchery tonight or are you going to a different place? We're not. We're not sleeping in here, right? There's a lot of people in here. This is this is a you question, I feel like. I mean, uh, it's a like, group. I, I Y'all like want to sleep in a wet that, hatchery you know? full of, like, you know, one crying mom and other ones, you know. That doesn't sound yeah, restful. No, it, it's, it, it doesn't seem nice. I mean, just to check, does the rest of your family, like, need us nearby? Are they good? That's kind of what I was thinking. Maybe a, a quieter room, you know, in case they, they nice. need something. All right, so we're going to a quieter room, yes. Is uh, Loretta going to join us? Um, you love Loretta, Steven. We do love Loretta. We You're love taking the little belt the off their moment. way. Oh my Romance. <laughs> Loretta also is not sleeping in this hatchery, and after having regrouped, <laughs> after having regrouped with you, she's also not. She's listen. If, unless you're giving her her own bed, she's going to her own home. So I, oh, you she- know. I will say that, you know, a couple of the gentlemen in town have agreed to escort Miss Loretta home because they, you know, she, she does, she does have her way, you know, um, but, uh, she's, she's taken care of and she the whole time, by the way, is like absorbed with the tragedy of what is happening. Give us Kevin in chat is wild. Steven also <laughs> lots of noise in your background. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, so- You're okay. <laughs> like, um, Stop but yeah. Kevin. <laughs> Give us Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but again, the, there's a lot of weight in the room over what has happened. And Miss Loretta, she, you know, she does seem to be a bit distracted at this point, thinking again of she's gonna need to make that ceremonial hat after all, you know. Um, but she's going to go home for the night. You guys abscond to where, Anora? It's your palace. Where are you going? Hmm. Please say anywhere. Um, maybe my room, and there's like enough day beds and stuff that everybody can. You, you can know, do whatever you want with your room. You can yeah. say that you have like a paired suite if you want, like anything. It's a palace, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's enough day beds. There's one at the end. There's one like by the window. There's one in the st- study area. She loves to lounge, so there's Great. plenty of room. Great. <laughs> Collaborative world building, everybody. Everybody gets to, so, uh, Nora, you're going to start us off. Tell us something about your room. We know a little bit about what your sister's room mm-hmm. looked like, so tell us a little bit about your room. We talked a little bit about mine. It was almost the same. It was just, like, blue ruffles. Um, we're going to say that it just smells uh, musty in there, though, because nobody goes in here anymore. Mm-hmm. So, I think yeah. that's, you know, that's some true. dust on some things. Yeah, yeah, oh. absolutely. Okay, yeah. All right, every uh, Stephen, give me something in the room. How's the cookie? You're muted. <laughs> you are muted, but the cookie looks great. It was a real tasty cookie. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so um, I, I imagine because we're in a Nora's room, right? Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's like because this is like ribbit people, you know. We like uh, like to like soak. I imagine that there's like a soaking tub or something in oh the God. room somewhere, just to like mm -hmm. so you can kind of relax in the warm water at the end of a long day. A sunken garden tub, if you will. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yes. Beautiful. In the corner of the room behind a screen. Mm, mm -hmm. Lovely. Mm -hmm. little, privacy. little privacy. Little lily pads on the screen. Oh, yes. Oh my beautiful. goodness. Very cute. Maybe a fiddle leaf thrown in there. <laughs> oh, absolutely. All right. Jimbo, add us a little something to the room. Yeah. I would definitely think, or is there like a window here or are we more underground? We're underground here. There are a couple of rooms that have windows, we but it's say sunlight, like a sun window, like sure. up at the very top. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, okay. beautiful. Uh, I'm just curious, okay, like, right. what would you have, like, thinking of Nora, like, when she was younger, maybe had like a, like, you know, people might have like a ant terrarium kind of thing. Like, y'all could easily just have those built into the walls and just have like a little <gasps> bit of glass. Oh. Cool, I love that. It's like so artwork, cool. but it's living. I love that. Hey. And we're going to say that there are still plenty of ants in there, not only because mm -hmm. someone is actually, you can see little treats and stuff that someone has been like leaving stuff in, but also it opens to the outside. So these are mm -hmm. like really, you know, wild ants. I yes. love that. I love That's that so much. very cute. Cool, Jimbo. <laughs> All right. And then Tank, what do you see in the room? Um, uh, I would say that there's like some uh, ribbit designed kind of like instruments screwing across the uh, mm -hmm. room around. You could see like maybe like little guitar picks that are worn from practicing and stuff. Aww. That's cute. That's I'll be cute. right back. Of course see there are right? instruments. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right. And then for me, um, I'm just going to add a very little bit of context, which is, Kayla, you also have a writing desk in this room. And um, and I will say yours is a bit larger, actually, than Liliana's, because as the creative child that you were, you kind of demanded mm -hmm. a larger desk, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But on the desk, you do actually see a beautiful bouquet of dried flowers um, mm -hmm. that had to have been put in here because there some of the room has not been you could it's not like it's incredibly dusty but clearly they're mm -hmm. cleaning it in cycles but the flowers mm -hmm. actually seem to be completely clear so they had to have been placed fairly recently um, and actually there is a folded letter that is on your desk Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um, I guess she'll walk over to the desk and, like, you know, just kind of barely trace her fingers over the little flowers. One falls off, so she's like, oh, I'm not going to touch anymore. And then she's going to read this this letter. Okay. Absolutely. So, unlike... We've had a lot of letters in this game, and you tend to have a lot of letters in tabletop RPG. Unlike most of the other letters, this is not long. It is really just like a few words. Uh, and it specifically says, Dear Nora, been thinking about you. The flowers are growing along the cliff sides and they reminded me of when you were here last. Hope all is well and that we get to see you soon. And then at the end it says, Sincerely. And then it has the stamp of Greenhaven, because this is a noble from Greenhaven, and it's written from Antony Undergrove. She's just going to really quickly tuck that note into the desk, and she's going to move those flowers somewhere where they're just not out for everybody to look at. She's just going to just tidy them away. Fantastic. None to see here. None to see here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, nobody needs to do that. Yep, yep, yep. We're breezing right past it. Yep. Late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now listen, this is, this is y'all's game. Y'all yeah. can interact with y'all back to or y'all can let her get away with it. This is up to you. I was just yep. there for the <laughs> cheese may, you know? <laughs> yep. So, 
Anora. <laughs> 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 How tall is Loretta? Oh my god, you love her. Tall she's, women she's are beautiful. She's a statuesque woman, yes. Mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. you know, I'm three and a half. I think, I think she's like four foot eight. Very tall. Climb that like a tree. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Even higher heels. A simia, a simia, that would be very attractive to a simia. Like, listen, that's just good. That's just good safety tools, you know? Uh oh. Okay, listen, we got to get rid of that. <laughs> get rid of this. Uh, uh, ben. You treat her with respect, though. She's a lady. No tell. No tell. <laughs> I, uh, I got no tell. There we go. Fixed it. Put the tail to good use. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. yeah. No tail on this yeah. on this monkey. Yeah, no awesome. tail on this monkey. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like, okay. Anything else that we're doing before we tuck away for the night, guys? Okay. I would like, so I would make us some really nice tea. Um, some really like uh, soothing, like help us sleep throughout the evening kind of tea. It was a long day, a lot of stress. We need to, everyone just take a moment to relax and enjoy your tea. Because guys, we are officially at the part. It's been a while since we've gotten a rest of any kind. But in this game, you don't restore everything at the end of a long rest. You have to okay, choose your You are items. correct. Yep. Use all of the all of the limbs. Hands and feet. Listen, ambidextrous <laughs> as hell. <laughs> My God. Oh, Miss Loretta would never know. No, she certainly would. Um, all right, guys. <laughs> so we are going to your character sheets or in demiplane and choosing the items that you want to do for your long rest. I think that I'm going to share this again real quick because again, I just think that it is pretty helpful to have. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops, not that. I always have to. There we go. Okay. So for downtime at a long rest, you have several choices. Uh, Everybody, let me know what you're doing. So we'll, again, let's go the opposite order of what we've done in the past. So we're going to start tank with you. What items are you doing with your long rest? Let's see. <laughs> um, Do you need help? I'm just reading it over here. All good. Oh, good. It's been a while. If, if we need yeah, to go. Minute. Do we want to go with someone else? If you need a minute, that's okay. Well... So one for clearing stress, right? Okay, absolutely. I'll do that one, and okay. then you roll a d4. Yeah. No, 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 for, no, 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 for no. a long rest, you just clear all stress. Yeah. Oh, bad. Yeah, this is yeah. this is your uh, a long. I think it's the first time we've like. This is your first time that we've rest. actually we, mechanically. We, we've used done one long rest before. Yeah, but did oh, we actually we? do it all? Because I think uh, we, we did it between characters. sessions. So we did a short rest and then immediately did a long rest. That's right. That's uh, right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So yeah. So with a long rest, you get to first of all swap any number of domain cards. You don't need to worry about this. Y'all don't have the maximum yet, so you're okay. Um, but you can swap them in your loadout for your vault. Again, that is not applicable under level five. Then you choose two options below. You can repeat the same action if you'd like. So tank is clearing all stress. Um, describe either that one or the next one that you choose to do either one so that's one of your options what's the other thing you're going to do oh cool. and so then prepare is you gain a hope if you choose to repair with someone else i'm going to be preparing as well okay great then we'll do that together so do y'all so want can... to explain that can be the item that y'all explain what do your characters do together that gains that hope well, you're just kind of relaxing. I am planning like to work on my armor, but if you just want to like, you know, bond with me, help uh, help me, you know, kind of do this group effort kind of thing, you know, just, you know, st stitching things back together, basically. Uh, yeah, so. and I could show him off that dagger I found. He's a rogue. He seems you can show like a dagger guy, you know? Yeah, the trick is to see the pointy end, you put it in him. <laughs> Yeah. Sticking with the point, yeah. 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 Nerds! Yeah. Yeah. Nerds! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, great. Um, okay, and then Teddy. And we get two hope. 
if we do it together. Shoot right? hope if you do it together. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And just to make sure, is either a Nora or Teddios or y'all um, uh, doing the I need the prepare? to prepare as well. So I was going to ask if Ted wanted to prepare with me. I most definitely can. I was going to prepare and do armor slots. Y'all are mm-hmm. cute besties. So what do, you, what do you mm-hmm. guys do for your pre- uh, for your prepare then? Hmm. Y'all remember that time y'all skipped stones? Yeah, I know, but yeah. we can't. I We're, thought about yeah. cleaning up the tub, but it's so... It is. Does Nura have like some secret hidey hole, like, you know, like a secret tunnel or anything in her room? Yes. Secret tunnel. Yeah. Just to be clear, Anora, Kayla, I was going to let you put secret tunnels anywhere you wanted in this palace. So you absolutely can put a secret tunnel that leads to anywhere, does anything. You, if you want to show them a secret tunnel, you could. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 Kayla. Secret tunnel to the kitchen this, and get snacks? That was what I was going to say. <laughs> mm, uh, we get tea snacks. Tea snacks is like we made some really good tea, and you're like, oh, you know, it'd go great with this, and then you like leave us. Cucumber sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) So as so like in that moment, you kind of tell the other members of the party, oh, you know what, we'll be right back, and you'll be back. How does where is it? How does it open? That your little secret tunnel. Mm -hmm. It is behind. We read this book together. It is behind a tapestry on the wall. It's behind the 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 um Saint de Feyre tapestry oh, back there behind it there's a little door that you and you know y'all it's a long tunnel just to be clear y'all are mm-hmm. gone for like half an hour you know mm-hmm. um but but y'all get do we it. bring snacks for everybody else ted uh <laughs> we do but not as much as we have Okay. We, ate, we ate a we we brought enough for everyone to have the same amount and then on the way back through the tunnel we snacked some great. more it was a, yeah. <laughs> i'm going to say i suspic- oh go ahead no go ahead you're, i was you're gonna the- say i suspiciously look at him and see the crumbs on, on his mouth <laughs> <laughs> stuck in the little hairs on my chin um <laughs> And then uh, I was figuring what we could do for the armor is we could just like uh, help each other, like kind of take turns, like sewing up each other's armor. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. All right. So, so basically everyone is prepared. So you have two h- hope each that you've gained on top of whatever you had before. Um, we have people that have three that have repaired all of your armor. And one mm-hmm. person that has cleared all their stress. Is that right? Okay. Yep. yep. Um, one thing I do want to note is that uh, Kayla, go ahead and roll a D4 for me. This is friendly. This is nice. <laughs> Suspicious. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> it was a nice one. I got a four. Okay. Fantastic. Right. I was hoping you would get four for this reason. Um, I was I, just about to say this was the um, the breath counter, though. I was like, if the fucking mist is back. <laughs> yeah, it's back. No, I'm kidding. It's it's not. Um, Kayla, when you go to the kitchens, what is Anora's favorite snack? I think this was in your homework, if I'm remembering correctly. Was it spiders? It was the like the spiders on a stick. I think is what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, that's I, cool. it absolutely <laughs> was. It was like delicious little things because mm-hmm. one of the characters that you had made was um, I want to find it real quick because I just loved mm-hmm. it so much in your note. You had oh do 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 why can't I find it. Uh, Pierre. He always sneaks her extra spider treats when he can. Now he's not here as late and everything, but he does Mm. still prepare things. That Mm. is a fan favorite in the palace, obviously, are those spiders on sticks. Um, And you see that there is a platter that had a lot of them made, obviously, but they just had four left and you grab them up and squirrel them away. Each one of those, if you eat them, you will restore one hope. Oh, nice. So you can... For the pack. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to write that in my inventory right now. Spider snacks for hope. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I really liked that Daggerheart did that in in like uh, the Sablewood. There was like the bug berry that you could have. And so I kind Mm -hmm. of wanted to make one of those here. Each one of these rooms that y'all go to, by the way, remember our clue mystery where you could have gone to any number of rooms. These kinds of things were in each of the rooms. You just are getting more time now, you know? Um, But yeah, there you go. 
So you have spiders on a stick times four. That's right. amazing. Hey, if I give them to my comrades, I don't know if they'll eat them, but will it? Oh, yes, 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 them? yes, absolutely. It will give them a hope as well. It's not just for you. Yeah, it's um, it's it's, it's a hope driven one. They're delicious, guys. Uh, this... I imagine you like squirrel them away when you turn around. Ted's like, <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> That's the crumb moment all over again. Not that at all. <laughs> and these are dried, which is why they last a very long time. They are dried and everything. Are they sweet or savory, Kayla? Savory. Mm, a little salty. Good Can snack. Good us? snack. Spicy? Not spicy? Jerky. Not spicy. Not spicy. We don't do spicy. No spice. Okay. No. Perfect. No. Fantastic. Okay. So. I loved this, guys. This was really fun. I really love the way that this game does those short and long rest things. I think it makes a lot of, like, fun little things. Okay, perfect. All right. So, now, at this point, you all bed down for the evening. Nora in your four-poster bed of your childhood. Uh, did we decide that it's just little settees and stuff that they're resting on? Or is there a secondary bedroom that connects to it? What do you guys want? Do you want little day beds, or would you like your own room separate? What's the what's the preference here? Wherever I can find a rock to put my head on, that's yeah. it. Wow, wow. Okay, so they can have the day beds then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take, yeah, take a soft bed. That'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, one of you no need for nothing fancy. One of you curls up in the bathtub, you know, like puts oh like, my god, I don't, I don't, I don't. some blankets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like Patrick, I pull up a little, just a little dirt blanket. Amazing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The rock I'm sorry, have y'all seen Atlantis? Of the course. little animated movie. Yeah. Okay, so Mole, the when mole. he like yeah. you know goes down to sleep in the ground, that's yeah, you. Fantastic. That <laughs> is absolutely you. Amazing. Okay. So, <clears throat> Tank, where do you bed down? I. We'll cozy up on the floor and then maybe use that little tapestry as like a little blankie. Kind of like when you're at your friend's house and they forget to give you a blanket. Ooh. And uh, I'll sleep on my side. I remember to have that eye on my neck, so I think sleeping on my back would be weird. Incredible. He makes me turn over to make sure the eye is not facing her while she's sleeping. Fantastic. All <laughs> right. Okay. And you all go to bed for the evening. Um, Steven, if you want to mute yourself, just as a reminder, it's totally, it's not a big deal, but we're going to get a little bit of a mood change here. That's a good uh, sign. We remember my dad's dead. <laughs> so, as you all drift off to sleep, each of you with a different emotion in your chest, some of you very hopeful for the day ahead, Anora thinking back to how difficult a day it was, you know, now that the adrenaline is leaving your body, you do remember that your father is gone. She will be crying into the pillow tonight, Absolutely. quietly. <laughs> One of you though, in the middle of the night, stirs. Tank. You wake in the middle of the night. All is dark, all is quiet, and you sit up as you often do. And looking around the dark room, you can actually see that each one of your compatriots, they're snoozing in their different areas, have small wisps of a silvery line coming out from their nostrils into the air that all weave together and dance out through the hallway, finding their way into the open air above. As it's not natural. you stand, you look back and you see your own body there lying on the ground with a similar tendril. Shit. <laughs> some conjuring shit right here yeah <laughs> and the doorway to Anora's bedroom the door is gone and replaced with a glowing portal of shimmering pearlescent light 
All right, I'll I'll take a look kind of creeped out of this out of body experience and uh, make my way to that shimmering little portal. I want to stick my hand in it and see what happens. Yeah. Wow. So as you stick your hand through it, it feels slightly warm to the, but, but warm like a warm bath. Nothing else. You pull your hand out, you flex, nothing is different. Seems okay, but it is completely opaque. You cannot see through it. I'll walk through and, uh, Let's see what's on the other side. Okay. So, as you step through, taking one last look at your sleeping compatriots and truly yourself, you step into a beautiful glade with massive trees, though isolated in structure. Although this is a forest, it's not a thick current forest that is alive everywhere. These are large tree trunks separated and each one of them a distinctly different color. One though directly in front of you is a shimmering pure white birch full of haha coruscating leaves of silvery light. At the base of the tree stands a figure, again, feminine, though maybe a bit ambiguous, drapes of hair and long robes that also shimmer like the sparkles of sunlight on the sea. And as you step into the clearing, she turns to you and you see what is a beautiful woman with an eye in the center of her forehead. And as she smiles to you, you see that the aisle turns up at the corners, smiling along with the rest of her face. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh. brother. I show her my eye and I'm like, Mm-hmm. I got one too. <laughs> nice show you mine. Show you mine? <laughs> so it's you who's been spying on me. She kind of playfully laughs, and you see from her back as she kind of turns, you see wings that kind of flutter out a bit and then almost flash and disappear. Say it like a fairy's? very much like a fairy's wings. Though she does not look anything like a fairy you would have seen. And as you gaze at her a bit more, and I say her that way because again, there is something androgynous about her. Her features actually kind of shift as she is there in front of you. Sharp and severe and then soft and beautiful. Almost like a dream herself. I ask her if I'm in a dream right now. Sure. Are you so you're asking am I in a dream? Yeah. She kind of smiles back to you and says, Yeah, yeah, this is all a dream right now. It's kind of neat, huh? <laughs> kinda of neat. A little creepy, but kind of cool i like all the sim i love what you've done with the place i like creepy? all the silver i was going for beautiful here and oh, she's gonna it. snap her fingers and it looks like home tell me oh, about awesome. your home what does it look like in terms Ooh. of the terrain in terms of the terrain i would say the home is like a little bit of like british countryside uh cobble walls that are like it's high for a ferry lower than you would expect uh dirt roads kind of a lot of like animals about it's very like woodsy absolutely and so you see in that moment as she snapped her fingers you see the countryside is all there and all of those other trees of different colors are gone her white tree remains but she's standing and she smiles a little impishly back is this better 
Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm so glad to see you again. When was the first time we saw each other? She kind of looks down a bit, and then you see her body kind of lurches. And you see the shade of that figure that you had met in the Sablewood when it had brought back Jimbo. And this is a different version of the glimpse. And after a second, she kind of sits back and shakes it off. A little bit different. I've lost a lot over the years. Well, thanks for, for helping out my buddy in a bind back there. Isn't that funny how that works? You know, I wasn't... I haven't been able to do anything like that in a while. Can you feel it too? The veils are getting... And she reaches her hand out in front of her into the thin air. And it disappears. And she snatches it back. They're getting thinner. Veils getting thinner? Yeah. Between... And she reaches her hand into another piece of air and pulls out a glowing golden fruit of the kind you have never seen before. This is an alien fruit. See? And then she reaches somewhere else and she draws a sword of black glowing ember. And then she snaps and they release. I can do things again. I haven't been able to do this in so long. Were you confined to the Sablewood before? Yes. I've been there for a while. I used to be able to be anywhere I wanted to. But... And the terrain flashes around you again, and it looks like that initial forest that you had stepped into, except instead of those giant trees, this time there are huge bone constructs scattered across the area. Well, and she kind of brushes past you walking and looking around. This is all that's left. So I didn't, I didn't want to stay here. So I went south and I've been there for a long time. Did you see some of my little friends? Was that the eyes that were coming out in those trees back there? Yeah. Are you um, holding up over here in Blackham Hollow? Oh, well, that's the funniest thing. I haven't been able to see here in so long. It's different now that the people are different. I think better. I think lovely now. The last time I was there, oh, it was under really bad management. But yeah, it's nice now. You know, I've been testing it, though, and I don't, I can't go much further. I couldn't see all the way to that little island that you went to. We used to call it, we used to call it Numara. What, what is it called now? What is it called now? The rights, the rights of, of Newmore. Newmore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what happened there? I, I could see a blue uh, light and I could see the tides really, really high. Yeah, there was a great battle. I think a shining silver lady came out with a harp and saved us from a uh, a tidal wave. Did she have armor? Was she a riddit? Yeah, yeah, like it does a song. That's my sister. That's Vera. Oh shit! It looks she... like uh, the veils are thinning for her too. I guess, right? Yeah, she lives here too. But we're not, we just, we can't always be here together. It's so strange the way that time moves here. I guess you wouldn't know how long it's been. You probably don't know how long we've been here. But I, I need help. And you know, I- Yeah, is your ability, oh God, sorry. No, what do you have? I was just wondering if your ability was tied to where I am, the eye. Mm, 
It seems like you can see wherever I am. I thought you might be open to it. I hope it's not too much a bother. Uh, I don't mind. I think it's kind of cool. Good. Do you mind if I let it finish then? Finish? And she's gonna kind of wave her fa- hand over your forehead and you feel just a slight at the back of your neck and her eyes kind of gray for a second. There. I can take it away if you hate it. No, I, I'd hate to remove uh, your ability to experience things. You seem super happy and stoked about it. I am, I am. I'm so excited. I couldn't do it for a really long time, and I hope that soon I can see everywhere again, but... Well, I used to work with your kind a lot, the Fey Folk. Was it the pearlescent order, maybe? Hmm. I don't know. Were they like little tooth fairy guys? Tooth fairies, yes! Yeah, it was tooth fairies. Do you still do that? Are you a tooth I, fairy? I think they do. I tried to become one, but they wouldn't let me be a tooth fairy because I don't have magic and I can't oh. enter uh, dreams or anything like that. Oh, you can't pass into the dreaming? Yeah, which is something normally necessary for tooth fairies, I think. Mm. I used to be able to grant that, you know. But it's been a long time. But maybe if if you want, if I get more of my powers back, I'd give you that. Yeah. Uh, you could just see what I'm up to and I could enter dreams. Would you let me? Would you let me see? I gave it to the White Fire Arcanist too, but she doesn't like to go very far. I knew there was always something I liked about her. She's a fairy um, too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I could finally prove them wrong that uh, you don't need magic. Oh, I love that. A redemption arc for both of us. Okay. True, true. Okay. Well... Then have we got a deal? Yeah. And she's Let's uh gonna reach her hand it. out to you, and her hand as she reaches it out is claw like. Long fingers with sharp ends. And she kind of shakes it off and it's a beautiful hand. Shake. I take my hand out and kiss the top of her hand like a queen lady. She kind of like... I've been learning a lot from Anora lately. <laughs> yeah. Really? That's so sweet. I love that so much. And she's going to take your head in between her hands and plant a kiss on your forehead. Ooh. Oh. I'll just blush. I'll try to play it cool, you know? BBEG established, call it it now, says MC Cat. <laughs> <laughs> we love a good... Fay deal, you know? <laughs> like, so. <laughs> well, now I can see anywhere that you go and come visit me from time to time. As soon as I get the ability, I'll let you walk into the dreaming. Definitely. And if I ever come across your sister again, I'll try to make sure this thing's pointing the right way for you. Thank you. I see her still, though. She's on this side with me somewhere oh, and she kind of looks around and you can see her peering into nothing effectively she's just looking around at different spots she's here somewhere well it was great meeting you thanks for uh mm -hmm. you're welcome everything <laughs> okay now sleep well and she's gonna reach out a finger and press it and the moment that she touches your forehead you <gasps> jolt awake in the middle of the night in Honora's bedchamber everything is looks normal <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I ended up being a little thematic that I'm like have the Feyre blanket it did <laughs> that was that so out, good yeah. absolutely yeah but yeah, at this point, 
You have the blessing of the glimpse. It doesn't currently provide anything to you, except that she presumably can see through the fully formed eye on the back of your neck, and you have entered an accord with Our Lady the Glimpse. All Dick. Right. An accord and maybe more. Mm. <laughs> A tryst? <laughs> Accord right. with two C's. Accord with two C's. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And that closes that little piece out. That was something that we wanted to do for Chris's character. And I love chat talking about this is definitely the big bad evil guy of the campaign. I for sure could see that. Listen, it could be happening. All right. So the night passes. Now we are, of course, you know, we're about two hours in. I need us to kind of get through the rest of these story beats fairly quickly because we need to prepare ourselves for the next episode. So over the course of the next week, okay, because I don't think it's appropriate to have you leave too quickly, okay? But over the course of the next week, you know, a lot of things are going to happen. Um, one of those things is, of course, that Decisions have to begun being made for your people now in the wake of your father, the king being left. I would say, and you can you can agree or disagree, I will let you make the decision for your people, Kayla. Um, but I would say that given Liliana's condition right now, because she is in a deep state of mourning, while you are here and she in point of fact yeah. you don't talk to her for the first couple of days she's absent from any of the meetings that the nobility take to discuss although you are there and again people are very reverent to you in these meetings almost looking to you for the answer um but eventually the everyone i would say decides that for now Queen Bedelia is going to step into the position and kind of hold the throne until Princess Liliana is ready to ascend. I will okay. tell you though, and again, I, I, will, I will always let my characters do this, the level of reverence, you can tell that when that decision comes out, some of the ribbit folk turn to you almost a little disappointed. And some of them almost look like they wanted you to take the throne. Do you have any interest in taking the throne? No, no and she's used to disappointing people, so it's not a big deal. Her. Oh, it was so cute. Also, just so you know, Kayla, you're a little bit in the corner of the frame. Oh, no, she leaning. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so she's cute. She's leaning. She's no. All right. So then that is the decision. I will also tell you that at one point over the course of the evenings, you do, um, in the middle of the night, there is a knock on your bedroom door. And when you go to open it, it is Liliana. And she oh, is standing there and she's kind of got a blanket all around her. And she has to oh my God, sleep over. Do you mind if I sleep with you tonight, Ed? Yeah, come in. Okay. Come on. Who are Let's these guys? Uh, don't mind them. <laughs> oh, <well>. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jimbo's in the ground. She kind of clutches head. her blanket around closer and then she's going to get into the bed with you. Mm -hmm. You guys draw the curtains around the four poster yes. bed that you have. Mm -hmm. And then that night she does like confide into you how terrible she yeah. feels, how hard of a time that she's going through. I just, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I know that I should mm -hmm. step up and that I should lead. But I'm just so sad, Anna. It's okay to take your time, Lily. It's okay. Mom's got it for a little while. There's no rush. Okay. So, she'll Gee. watch over it. And then you're going to be great. You know, you've always been good at decision making and everything. You're going to you're going to do a great job. Okay. <laughs> do you think Dad would be disappointed in me? Never. 
Never. There's nothing to be disappointed in. Okay. Mm -hmm. I really missed you. I missed you too. Mm -hmm. We hug. <laughs> I imagine uh, inside with you guys, Bill is just the oh, warm rooster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Emotional support nice. animal, Bill. Just like, oh. She goes, oh, what's, oh, that's nice. I like that. Are those actual tears? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are. You didn't see them, Holly? Oh, you didn't see them, Holly? Rachel is wild. Somebody get her the Grammy. No. Okay. Yeah, I could fuck with y'all all I want. <laughs> <laughs> that crying thing of like I'm fine yeah so but she is going to you know she that night she really does like confide in you you are up several hours talking every and everything and she'll hold, fall asleep holding hands and everything together okay mm -hmm. um yeah but you know after that I would say that's like three days in after that she does begin making more appearances but for the most part, she is just still quiet and kind of follows her mother's lead a lot. Your mother very much having kind of the conversations with the people of who are kind of pushing for things to move more quickly of, listen, this is my daughter. She will come out of this when she's good and ready. But right now, she needs our support. So I'm going to take this stance. I am the grieving mother. I am the grieving widow. You will follow my lead. She is really embracing that hard mother that you've seen growing up, you know? Um, I also... Oh, go ahead. I was going to ask, like, uh, I, know, I know, like, a lot of things have been going on, people, you know, adjusting to this new stuff, but I just want to ask, uh, the whole explosion thing, is that just being ignored, you know, put under the rug and whatnot? I, I'm just checking. It, one thing I want to do, and I don't know what it's appropriate, but I would love i would love to have brown hats made and make them like honorary like you know royalty guards or whatever absolutely like make them honorary kingdom absolutely. i love that because he's already got a brown hat <laughs> fantastic yes okay i hate it means something incredible what does it mean what does the brown hat it's mean a, it's the royalty guard it's the just like they guard. are just, yeah. oh so incredible all right <laughs> they so, all save my ass so many times and bill was, gets one too i was going to say that there is an event at one point everything is kept quiet because of mm -hmm. you know usually when there's a, a a grand celebration it's usually a lot happier there's, it's, there's so much darkness that instead of announcing you to the full populace, instead at one point, you know, Honora has been in these meetings with the nobility and she has already asked for this to happen. One day she is in the throne room. The throne itself is left empty and Queen Bedelia is sitting right there in her general seat, though wearing the crown, the cap. Mm -hmm. um, and Honora is standing, both of the sisters are standing there to the side, and your t group is summoned to the royal chambers. Mm -hmm. And as you, the doors are opened to you, you see, Honora, what are you wearing? Tell me what you're wearing. It's gotta be, it's gotta be coordination clothes, but she doesn't super like dresses, so okay. we're just gonna, her nicest tunic, you know, Absolutely. fancy, Incredible. all of her jewelry. Yeah. And, got the fancy clasp for her cape. Fantastic. So. Mm -hmm. And it is, there is a small crowd of ribbons, not the entire island, but a small crowd of the nobility, especially, that there are there. And Queen Bedelia, as you approach collaborative world building, who wants to tell me something about this throne room? I will start you off very briefly. This room, actually, you know how I said there are f very few windows? This room has a huge, uh, it's not windows exactly. There are columns made out of stone that kind of open out into the Eastern Sea. So you can see the Eastern Sea outside behind the throne. Tell me something else about this throne room, guys. Anybody who wants to jump in. It's got a carpet of clover just <gasps> growing oh, through it. Beautiful, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got anything? Oh, muted. Muted. <laughs> <laughs> 
I imagine that there's like a lot of creeping vines kind of going up the like far walls, mm-hmm. like kind of working their way up the sides. Oh, beautiful. I was hoping for something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it could be anything. It could be like the people that are in attendance, the decor of the room, the energy. Ooh, yeah, I feel like it is like kind of, there's like some like low key hype kind of built. Like people, some people have kind of heard what's happening, but it's not like official yet. But like mm-hmm. a new hat, a new hat. So there's like some murmuring kind of happening in the crowd. Yeah. Anything else from either Jimbo or uh, Tank that you want to add? The throne, there's a wall of hats, I guess, that are just kind of on some Game of Thrones, like swords make up the throne, but this one's just mm-hmm. like... Oh, absolutely. Of all the rulers pass. Entering. Of all the rulers <laughs> pass. Absolutely. Get hung up there. All right, Justin, you got it. I, I was also kind of thinking towards the chair itself. You know, instead of uh, instead of being made of swords, I'm thinking the armrest. Like, there's like little like frog statues to it, and it's just a big tongue making the uh, armrest. Ooh, incredible! <laughs> Amazing! I love that. Um, I'm going to add a, a couple things. Number one, the rose. So, of course, there is the clover carpet that leads down the center of the room, but the actual rose where like the pews are and things uh it is actually there's shallow water there with lily pads throughout that the rivets kind of stand in and kind of dip their little feet in and keep themselves hydrated throughout this um but also that the woman standing on the dais in front of three hats on pedestals is loretta the modiste to the throne And she is standing there beaming proudly at the work she has done. And as you approach the throne. Can I add yes, one thing to Anything you, you want. So, so, of course you uh, can't ha- ha- it. Tell me more. <laughs> How many days has it been since, uh, like, from now to, like, from when we, like, ended the, like, uh, first first night we were four. here? I'm going to say it's been okay. four. Okay. So, like, of those four days, three of them, Ted has been absent. Bill has kind of been hanging around as like an emotional support animal. The Ted's been absent, um, and he's yeah. been making his way over to Miss Lovegrave's house and, and spending time with her while certain hats were maybe being designed. Oh, um, you got your little your fingers in the pie of the hat making <laughs> process. I feel like I feel like because like tell me if I'm wrong. Are, not all the hats are the same like shape and design. Like they're like specified no. for he's like. An artist. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's however your character would wear a hat. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just brown. That's the just only brown. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, was Were you, you're just trying to get your way with the hat shape. You weren't trying to romance Miss Loretta. Is that true? Or I mean, you? just simple you are. conversations were happening. Give I me mean. a present yeah. check. Give me a present <laughs> check. I'm going to need it. How good Frit, were Frit, you, Stephen? <laughs> It's not a crit, but it is pretty good. And um, I would definitely add one of my hopes as a tea artisan because I would have been um, showing oh, off you're some. Uh huh, uh huh. So that is a 16 with hope. I, all right. I am going to say that I had let it be a 17. Oh, oh, okay, okay, so okay, 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 okay. So I'm going to say that, like, in those first few visits, she, it's she was definitely getting like a little bit caught up in it, a little bit flirty. This is one of the heroes, but at some point, you notice that although she's still kind and and generous of spirit, something just pulls back slightly. It's maybe not off the table forever, but she definitely, there was a little bit less and you can see that she, she is putting a stopper to it at this point. But as you do approach the dais, you have noticed, however, because it was so close that she has stopped calling anyone else handsome, honey. She's not doing that at least in front of you at this point. And also as you approach, she kind of Oh my god. Alright, absolutely. You're not not booed up, you know, but (laughs) (laughs) I'm disappointed. I give the, like, as I, because when I walk, I walk like on my knuckles too, like I, like I'm like a, I'm very more like ape. 
Um, so like I give like the little shoulder roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And she kind of stands up a little bit taller, like, like um, but at that, you know, you all approach, and Queen Bedelia actually does stand from her seat. And I did not prepare this speech, guys, so you're gonna have to just vibe with me here. But I know some of the things. No that vibe. I, some of the things that she is going to say, however, are. My fellow Ribbitens, my denizens of the reed thrush, my black gum Haleans, I come to you today not as a queen and not as a royal, but as a mother of two beautiful, strong girls and as a grieving widow of a great man. If it weren't for my daughter, Honora, and her friends, this band of adventurers, it's possible that we would have never seen another day here in this beautiful home of ours. So at the request of my daughter and at the approval of the royal court, we have implemented a new station, that of the royal guard. And as such, we would like to bestow upon you, Tank Molerson. If you would take your step and you step up and kind of tell me how you do this. Tell me how you do this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of like how he had his monkey swagger. I have the little fairy swagger. There's dust going in the air. Oh and I go goodness. and I heroically on one knee go down and get my bow my head, I suppose. And Loretta steps forward, takes a hat off. Do you know what it looks like already? Have you decided? Um, I would go with Tank. I would go a beret. A like a brown beret. Oh my yeah. God. That's it. Absolutely. And Miss Loretta places it on your head and, oh, and kind of takes a step back. You, for your service. And a Mr. Jimbo, do you have a last name? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Fantastic. <laughs> Mr. Jimbo? He, he's Yin Clan. Jimbo of the Yin Clan. Of the Yin Clan. If you would step forward, Miss Loretta, we talked. I uh, thought we, we we talked about it. we were trying to give me like a new band to go on my hat. Honey, I, I don't, don't you even oh. worry about it. I did exactly to your specifications, and she kind oh. of unveils it with a. She had yours had a draping over it, and she is it perfect or is it perfect? Uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> Goddamn genius! And she steps back. <laughs> And she said, That's and great. Queen Bedelia, now I did hear something about a little mischief at the gates, but, you know, as long as going forward, any of those explosives are leveraged against the enemies of Black Gum Hollow, I think we can keep yeah. you. <laughs> and she kind of nods solemnly. And then, of course, Sir Tedios of the Yin Clan, and you step forward. This one, Loretta actually like her hair back behind her and takes the cap and very regally sets it on your head. Um, it is a very simple, like Abu Aladdin style, like oh hat, my little God. fez thing. Oh, so cute. Oh, I didn't <laughs> ask Jimbo, what does your hat actually look like? Uh, so I was like just my normal hat, but it's just kind of a band now to kind of go around the out, like you know, around the top of it. Mm -hmm. I love <laughs> yeah. it so much. So, yeah. He gets Maybe to keep his designs on it. Yeah. yeah. At this point, you guys see that Ted steps back, and Bill actually steps forward, and Queen Bedelia says, "Oh, I, I don't think I." And Loretta says, 
Of course you did, honey. We absolutely <laughs> did. And she pulls out a very small little, I would say that cap that you put on birds, like aviation birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she steps forward and puts it on Bill. And Queen Bedelia kind of laughs to herself. Mm-hmm. And then all of you step back, having received this. And Queen Bedelia continues, We will never be the same here on Black Gum Hollow. But we will get to retain just a bit of what we were before. And that is due to you. Thank you so much for what you've done for my people. And the entire room erupts in hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Very cute. There you go, guys. Y'all have that. Also, I will say this as well. Later on, you're informed that, you know, the the coffers of the the palace are weakened currently. It hasn't been a great season. But you're certainly going to get some money. You have to, okay? So, um, each one of you and Anora, you're included in this. Um, she's she's using this as your allowance, effectively. Um, but each one of you is going to get. Um, I'm going to say. I'm going to say, one bag of gold, each. Not Bill does not get his own. By the way, Bill got a hat, but not a bag of gold. Uh, yeah. <laughs> One bag of gold. Mommy, gosh. Yep. He's getting too bucket. Yeah. He doesn't even get a medal. Yep. Yeah. They do not have any healing supplies to lend to you guys. They were using a lot of it throughout that process, so we can't replenish that here. And there are no healing supplies on the island, guys. There are none. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Um, uh, but you can also, they. she also allows you to tour the vault and choose one magical item from the family vault you guys don't have to pick that now but before the next time we come together you as a group get to decide what you are taking from the family vault it we're going to work together, okay? <laughs> because we can't, obviously can't have something for end game, right? But we can have something relatively strong or fun, whatever y'all want. It could be a weapon, it could be an armor, it could be a fun item, you know? So we'll decide that together separately. All right? Okay. Now, I... What other things do you guys want to do? Caliper. We can't bring yeah, we got, caliper. Yeah, we got to run the... Yeah, back over to... Make sure Frank's... <coughs> All right. I'm going to say three. that it took so long, because this is day five. It took so long because you lost Caliper again. He was running around oh. the palace. In that for the middle of the first night, he just absconded through the ant thing, and he's gone. But then you did find him again, okay? In the gardens again. Uh, and so you all make your way through the swamp, following those trails across the duck boards. And, of course, after... Jimbo, you approach and everything. I'm going to say you do the old routine of knock it on the outhouse. After a couple of times, you open it. That eye appears. He's like, what do you... Oh, it's you. Hey, you sold me some... Uh, or you traded me some, like, you know, improperly stored... Uh, you got my cat? Well, yeah, but I also got blown up. Well, I, I don't know what you want me to do about that. I don't think I could do anything for you getting blown up. I, t- I said, could you handle your explosives or not? And you said that you couldn't. That was a perfectly made explosive. Mm-hmm. Obviously, didn't get blown up enough because you're here. That's exactly I'm sturdy. A good point from your friend back there. Who's, oh, God damn it. I brought my friends. Hi. Hi. Well, hi. How's Frank? Hi. <laughs> Oh, oh, Frank's, and you hear, oh, are they asking about me? 
Yeah, no, Frank, Frank, no, no, they're not, they're not, they're not, uh, what, uh, what can I, uh, uh, hi, I hope that you, I hope that it wasn't as intimidating this time, I made him take down all the signs, those signs were there for a reason, no, no, the signs aren't there for any reason, why don't you invite them in, no, we are not inviting them in, what do you want? Oh, we got the cat. <gasps> you hear it, Frank? Caliper, <gasps> bring him down, bring him in, and you hear a bzzz, and the like, the uh, hatch opens, and Frank is still talking to the no, not not just yet. We couldn't. Oh my god, damn it! And then the, but you guys make your way down into there, and to speed run through this interaction, okay? Um, the calendar has been taken down. Frank does not actually like it out and continually takes the, the, the calendar down. You don't see it. Um, the exp Everything is much cleaner <laughs> this time when you go in and well organized. Things have run amok while Frank was out of business. Um, Frank has lovely treats that have been prepared for any visitors to his home. Um, though when anyone inquires about it, Frank clarifies, oh, no, no, no. Bill makes these. I just put them on the platter really nicely. Um, but very lovely, like, desserts and things. And at some point... Everything seems a lot more consensual this time. Yeah, things are a lot <laughs> more consensual this time. Yeah, Frank is allowed to be out and about now that that dang mist is gone. Oh, wow. Yeah, the dang mist, you guys. He had to be, he had to be <laughs> tied up for his own good, you know? Uh, but secret, keep him safe. Yeah, but you've gone through this initial interaction and someone pulls out the cat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, honey, it's so good to see you. I have missed you. And he kind of pets Caliper and Caliper immediately jumps down and just like jumps onto some other items and starts like clawing at it. And Bill's like, get him off of the, I don't like it when he, you know, and they're like <laughs> tithering around. Mm. What would you like to do? Uh, well, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be heading out pretty soon. I don't know if you need anything else from me. I appreciate your assistance, even though it nearly blew me up. Uh, but Did I offer you something? Yeah, probably. Was it I that? It was, was it? I think I had said that you could have a blunderbuss if you brought the cat back. I am a man oh, of my that's word. Right. It, yeah, or Bo was interested in it. Yeah. Right. I think that'd be a fair trade since the explosive didn't work or work too well or it, whatever you want to look at it. It worked perfectly. And I, I I, don't, I'm not going to hear any more about it, but you can have, and he like kind of, uh, because again, there were five back behind him. Now this one's my starter. You can have, you could have the starter one. I don't think you're the man for it though, honestly, if you, well, you can't handle an explosive. How would you handle an uh, uh, munitions? Well, insulting your manhood. <laughs> I, I got rid of the fire. Which fire? It's in the jar. Oh, you carry one of those around. You're not supposed to have those around explosives. Are you sure I just put a sign up for it since you like signs so much? <laughs> Take the damn blunderbuss and get out my house. <laughs> he kind of uh, like hands it to you. Mr. Mr. Uh, Bill, Bill, is it? My name is Bill. Mm. No, Sick burn! You just got fucking roasted, dude. Frank, can I kill him? And Frank says, "No, you cannot. No, absolutely not. These are our guests. They, you can't, you can't kill them." He's like, "What else do I'm you only, need?" I'm, all, I'm only giving you a hard time because I know we like self making sure our stuff's quality, and I'm just giving, I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah, it, it worked fine. It exploded well. It didn't blow me up. I just because I'm sturdy. Thank you uh, for saying. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Would you, would if you see anybody from the mining coalition, would you please let them know that I didn't mean to blow it up? I didn't mean to. And if they would, if they would rescind their termination of my employment at any time, I would be willing to step back in and make more, more ammunitions for them. I wasn't aware of that, but yeah, yeah, I'll pass along. Fantastic, yeah. Well, it was good to see a, a member of the Mining Coalition. I heard some crazy stuff. If rum if rumors are true, you guys, and he kind of looks at your hats, were you the heroes of that whole situation? Oh, uh, yeah, we killed a big bird thing. Mm. 
Shadow King, huh? Mm -hmm. Something like that. So you know of him. <laughs> I've been telling okay, people okay. for years it was coming and that you had to prepare. I knew it. I knew it. Frank, I told you he did say. Like, like, <laughs> 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 All right. You were right and you should say it, Bill. <laughs> say it from here on out. I'm putting up another sign you aren't. Okay. And he kind of like, <laughs> and all right. Uh, is there anything else y'all want to do? He does have other blunderbusses. He has other explosives and stuff. He might be willing to trade if anybody wanted to buy anything else. I don't know what y'all are doing though. No, I don't. I don't need an explosive or a, or a gun. I mean, it'd be, uh, I wouldn't mind having a little something with some range to it. I got I got this grab one thing, but it only shoots a little ways. Uh -huh. What kind of a thing are you looking for? And this is also your GM asking if there's a specific thing you're looking for out of kind of the guide. Oh, I have not I have not looked. Okay. Oh, no, no worries. <laughs> I just wasn't sure if you were. What kind of a thing do you have in mind? Honestly, it, I didn't have anything in mind. I was just going to peruse the wall. And if there's anything that's piqued my interest, sure. But... Don't, don't get anything directly on my top it's of my head. It's just moment. different kinds of blunderbusses, honestly. But, like, literally, if you think of something, I would love to tool something. You know, I love doing that stuff. It's fun. Um, so, if there's something that you'd like, I'm down. A harpoon? A harpoon gun? <laughs> I mean, if you just got like a little, little pea shooter kind of thing, would, like, you know, don't got, don't got to be damaging or anything, you know, just to get someone's attention real far away and, you know, maybe poke out an eye. Uh, a little, a little, I guess on this. Like a, like a small, skinny, long one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got one uh, of those for you. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 I know you said it. <laughs> I got one of those for you. Frank is right there. <laughs> <laughs> I meant like one of your guns, but you know. You can't have me. I'm not interested. Also, I don't fit the specifications. Here, you can have this, though. And he kind of, like, takes one off of the wall. We're going to regroup on what this looks like. No. We're going to regroup on how this gun functions within the context of Daggerheart, this tabletop RPG in open beta 1.4.2. Um, but you have that. That will cost a whole handful of gold. Okay. Okay. All right. Did they come with the bullets? Yeah. Or the bees or whatever you call them? Yeah, listen, it's got unlimited <clears throat> bullets, and if you run out, you're just going to mail off to me, and I'll send you more. Because bullets I, yeah, I, the GM, don't deal with ammunition. Nobody's buying arrows <laughs> in my games. I don't like it. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. Anything else y'all want to do? Yeah. Um. We got a blunderbuss as a reward. Yes. Y'all got right. a blunderbuss as a reward that nobody has really said that they're using or anything, but also you got the long range pea sh shooter. Cool. I'd be yep. down to snag that. If somebody wants this dagger, I would assume maybe um, Jimbo would be interested in that dagger I found, right? Sure, unless uh, Bill can use it. <laughs> or that. <laughs> um, I, I don't. Mm, I don't know if Bill can use it. What kind of daggers? Is it anything? This is it's like a like Halloween that. moment. We all like. It's a plus one. Put out our bag and see what candy we have. <laughs> it's a plus, plus one. one is all that you know about it at this time until you use it. I see. I see. I'd be interested. Or I, I could use it possibly when I'm just got my little axe and have that out as well. But if someone else is welcome to use it as well. I mean, I normally have a uh, my uh, little comma, my little like hook blade, my little sickle thing, and then my shield. So. We could always hang uh, on to it. And yeah, we can hang on to it for sure. Just maybe like if, if if Jimbo wants to hold on to it for now, he can for sure. All right. Nothing else. Tape it to the front. Can, wall. Uh, uh, well, I guess I don't know. Is is this Bill here? Is he like a blacksmith? Can he work on stuff? Sure, he could. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I would be cool if maybe I could like attach it. Like I know he said like. Yes. It, like a a actually attach a chain to like make it to where I could use it as like a ranged weapon as well as like a melee weapon. Oh, of course. He can do that for you. Yeah. And that's not even very expensive. I'm, I'm going to say that he's going to charge you like two handfuls of gold. 
um, to do that. Remember, a bag is made of 10 handfuls. So whatever y'all had before, plus the bat, you know. Uh, but yeah, he could do that for you absolutely for two handfuls. Um, and he can have it done for you, he says, in two days. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I would appreciate that, Bill. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I appreciate people who like fine craftsmanship. And this is a really nice sickle that you got here. I like that. I like that a lot. It, it's Yin Clan. It's, it's worked well. Oh, oh, the Simia. That's you. Fantastic. It's good to know you. Hey. Bill knows a lot about a lot, you guys. He's, uh, he's a very knowledgeable kind of fella because he makes it his business, you know? Um, all right, great. Okay, um, just as an FYI, the blunderbuss. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that off offline because I, I want to make sure that we're doing okay stuff with all of these weapons. But we'll present these like on our next episode and everything before we get going. But we've gotten a lot of weapons. We've got a like, which is what I wanted to do. Since you're leveling up, everybody gets fun new weapons. You know, in an actual like um, slower paced campaign, I'd piecemeal it out. But we're playtesting Daggerheart. Let's get practice with some of these weapons, right? Um, so Kayla's got her harp. Chris now has the original blunderbuss. Jimbo has the uh, the pea shooter that we're going to talk about. Um, Ted has is going to have a sickle on a chain. Um, and who has the dagger? Uh, it's kind of floating at the moment. Yeah, we don't know what it does yet. I think uh, right now Jimbo is going to hold on to it is what we decided, unless Anora wants it. Do you want a, a, a crazy sick dagger? No, thank you. <laughs> no. Um, and, but the and magical last... items we'll go look at later, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, all yeah. Gonna get one additional item. Yep, 100%. Um, but make sure that you're marking anything that you have taken. I need somebody to mark on their character sheet that they have that dagger. Because yep, again, I'm, I'm okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Things get lost if we don't. So good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And I think that's probably, is that everything for the Bill and Frank relationship stuff? Okay. Anything else that we want to do, guys? Um, just uh, before we leave town, I don't know, are we leaving yet? Is that is that? We're going to be happen? leaving soon, but I'll get there. But yeah, okay. anything that you want to tackle, though, it's now is the time over the course of a week to a week and a half that y'all are here on the island, okay? Did we need to go down to the like, main town and check on anyone? Yeah, yeah I, I would kind of like, since we were honored at it like a ceremony, I would kind of uh, go into town and do like odds and ends to help out around the town. Um, any people that like need assistance, me and Bill are just kind of like kicking it around town and helping out in any way we can. Moving, carrying stuff, anything that's like if there was any damage done or anything. Yes. I don't think there's... Not a ton of damage to the island, really. But because people were oh, away for... The, the real significance is that people had, like, boarded up windows and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, absolutely, y'all can help with that. The... Anora, so you know, the catch? Wow. The... the oh, the shrimp! Yes, the nice. shrimp, the blood worms. <laughs> It's all coming back, and you get the idea that you have no idea how long the rites of Newmorn have hosted this terror, but maybe there was something there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the catch is fantastic. Mm -hmm. the, the world around you is beautiful now, you know? Like, um, I think people who are not from, like, swampy areas uh, assume that it's, like, this gross place and sure it has those days but like the sky is usually beautiful bright blue over a swamp and stuff and it is now again return to that um the children you know frolic throughout the world and stuff uh everybody again is incredibly reverent of Anora. um at one point you do have a re an interaction with yvette um mm -hmm. who uh i was about to say check on my friends and yeah. all that stuff and she does like you know hug you very very closely and thank you so much for taking care of them and uh, and everybody as she's doing that they kind of ooh, you know like she's she's friends with Anora. like oh da, 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 da. you hear little whisperings going around by the way of sancta nora 
like no. Saint Denora. Yep. Those little whispers. Don't ask me about that. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah, listen, the last one got sacrificed, but um, I know that's why I'm like, mm, I got a heart, but now I'm a saint. Mm, Y'all better keep me safe. A little wild, a <laughs> little wild, yeah. Um, it's a good yeah. thing you just made us your royal guard. Yeah, it's true. yeah. 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 And then we can tell us a religious thing because you don't got to worry about voting for that. That's okay. I, All right, lean into I it. I would <laughs> like to really point out to everyone, though, that at the end of our last episode, democracy happened Anora gave the people the the opportunity to close the gate and they all Good. chose to do so it was incredible like That's we've really how you stop a coup before it happens <laughs> everybody let's all help <laughs> pitch in do your best to recycle the evil oil operation says you know <laughs> mm -hmm. all right but y'all help out across the island and everything. Cato is doing much, much better and stuff, though. You, he can't talk a lot. He was so weak already that being sick like that really has. He's He is down for the count. It almost took him out. Yeah. <laughs> Broussard suspiciously is not around a lot. And when you like, when you come into view and stuff, he kind of like hides and like darts in and out you can pursue that if you'd like or you can let him be kind of twisty if you like mm, no she why why are you like this hold on like we we like picking on each other what's happening are you hungry are you going to the kitchen is that where you're going all the time kind of like smiles like he was feeling weird when you approached but he smiles and says mm -hmm. yeah yeah you gotta feed these muscles, you, were hungry? you know and he kind of flexes oh, okay all right now that there's more shrimp, I guess it's fine. You know, and you're a growing boy, so. Anora, what happened on that island? It wasn't good. It wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, I don't know if you knew Cassandra. Turns out she was bad. She was going to bring about a Shadow King. But it's okay. They took her head. Um, yeah, and, and we sealed it all away. You know, everybody did their part, and um, everything's fine now. So no more mist. You're fine. You're safe. You know, you, I, I hope, I hope you never thought that I, I didn't like you growing up, you know, I, um, really, well, I just, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the fat head comments. No, I, 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 you've, you've got a, you've got a great, you know, like I, uh, um, is uh, I'd, I'd like it if we could stay in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we could. You want to write letters? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right. You can, you know, keep me up to date about what's happening here, you know. Okay. You don't forget about us out there, okay? On all no, your adventures. Never. never. My heart is interred here. <laughs> his, his, he like blanches at that and just like his eyes are like large. And I'm mm -hmm. going to say that he, the second one, he's going to, he can, I'm not going to roll for this. He can't hold back. He's going to bend down and hug you. Okay. Oh. He's okay. going to hug you very I'll bend closely. down. I like how you said that. <laughs> Listen, this man is huge. <laughs> like, <laughs> give him a little, a little pat on the shoulder, just a little. There you go. Yeah, you know, hug him back a little. He Don't does like back. linger for just a just a second, and then like falls back and uh, kind of like. Uh, uh, it's a good thing that you don't have hair, you know, um, yeah. like, but he's, he's just going to kind of fix your, your robe just a little bit okay. and your cape just a little bit. And... Adjust the pendant on your cape. Got a little oh disheveled God. when you hugged. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I, gotta... I don't know if we're flush, but that was a lot. She, they, she we, we've already decided yeah. that they do. Yeah. We've already decided that they do. Yeah, just a little bit. And he's going to say, bit. and at this point, some of the other ribbit fisher folk are going to be like, Broussard, Bruce. Oh, and they all like stop at that point, and they're like, and he's like, what? Well, we the catch is it's just there's a lot today, you know. And Broussard kind of yeah yeah, and he uh. Okay, I'll be seeing you around, fathead. 
And he kind of winks at oh you. God. And you punch <laughs> him in the shoulder and he cares off. But he does give you like a long glance over his shoulder. Okay, kind of like of ruffles his head as he like saunters <laughs> off into the distance. Mm -hmm. okay. Just a <laughs> big hunk of frog. Big hunk of frog. Yo. Like walk out of wherever you were, and you see uh, Loretta and Ted walking down with uh, with sticks, uh, spiders on a stick. He may have seen. Oh, she's a, got a, a delicacy. She's got mm -hmm. her her uh, hat that she wears, a blue hat because she's a mm -hmm. uh, she's a mm -hmm. uh, merchant. Noble. Is mm -hmm. a beautiful big sun hat today. Okay, oh, and nobody is wearing good. masks at this point, you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, every, yeah. but nobody has to wear masks. But she has a huge sun hat and a beautiful sun dress today. She's leaning into her femininity, and mm -hmm. <coughs> she has a different wig on today. Also, this one is a this one is like a is like a honey blonde that she's wearing oh, today. My she's kind gosh, of tied it up blonde. into like one of these like loose buns that she's wearing. Mm -hmm. And a parasol while she's eating her little, her little spiders oh. on a stick. I got it. Y'all see them like walking together. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Bill is uh, in oh, the palace. Should. Oh, that's uh, right. He, he's, he's being an emotional support animal. Oh, that's right. He, he's, Lily. he's making sure Lil Liliana is okay. He's, right. he's, he knows what his job is and he is royal mm. guard and yeah. Liliana is royalty. All right. This is final call. Last things that we want to do before we kind of finish up the, our, our kind of tie into the next stuff. Anything left? All good? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I give uh, uh, Loretta at one point, I give her one of the uh, family bath tokens <gasps> and tell her if oh you ever make your way into, up to the entry, um, all of our uh, baths are wonderful. The family baths or something, are, something extra. You are incorrigible. <laughs> I'll see you and soon, if I'm guys. there, I'll lead you around to some places that we don't take everybody. Oh, we love the VIP treatment, just like the queen that I am, you little prince. You're not Very wrong. Funny. Very funny. <laughs> You're not wrong. All right, so. I will say there is one morning and we're going to breeze through this, but there is one morning when all of you wake up and it's just Queen Bedelia and uh, I'm sorry to say Pampas, who has been reinstated, um, but Pampas and a couple of the Royal Guards, Liliana, yourselves as a group, you Kevin. all, uh, Kevin has not been reinstated. <laughs> I mean, y'all can disagree, Kayla. No, but he's not reinstated. No. Okay. I feel mm -hmm. like Kevin is out. Rory is there, though. Rory wearing. Daffodils in, but on thin ice. Yeah. <laughs> Rory wearing, like, armor that is clearly, like, big and important is there mm -hmm. um but you all wander mm -hmm. at daybreak um there is a fog in the air but it is not it has nothing of the same and you remember this is going to hang in your heart for a while the things that happened on this island but this cool morning you all get into uh what is effectively a um palanquin and are carried across the island um no 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 sorry magical world the palanquin moves of its own accord it floats itself no more legs this one doesn't have legs most things have legs do we want them to have legs legs or no legs no legs on this one i guess okay no legs on this one this one floats um, but i do want it to like the bars to like be lined with like little dragonfly wings that are like Oh, amazing! Keeping oh, it, like, uh, that's what it is. Okay, absolutely. And and they don't actually follow the path. They actually are when you exit from the backside of the palace down into one of those baileys. They are there as the royal stables. Okay, and these are some palanquins that you each get into, and they flit across the coast of the island. You looking outside as though you're on a train watching the shoreline. A glittering kind of beautiful sea. But as you get to, who are you talking to and pointing at? Your wife is back there. <laughs> it's a baby. No, it's Nico. Oh, it's, it's a cat. He's attacking, he's attacking Bagheera. Amazing. 
So remember, it is very early at this point, still dark. What you're seeing out the window is just the beginning of the sun as it's turning the horizon blue, glittering off the sea. You get to that eastern shoreline and you all get out. And here in this small crowd, you have a moment where Queen Bedelia steps forward and this is effectively, you've all prepared for it, knowing that it was coming and knowing that it was going to be an intimate event. What is a funerary procession for King Fiddley for just you? give me like this is a somber silent moment nobody has mm -hmm. to make speeches or anything but as our final little fill-in each one mm -hmm. of you give me something here that either the people do for this celebration celebration i'm so sorry do for this passing or is it is it a like would it, would, the, would this be like a burial or there because is we no don't body. have a body there is no body yeah. but you are mm -hmm. looking out to the sea where the rites of new morn used to be it is now just a seashore there ju just the sea there is nothing there mm -hmm. but presumably his body was taken by the tides out to this eastern mm -hmm. front this is could, shore. could oh sorry uh, western there... i'm so sorry western shoreline uh-huh yep could there be like, um, like maybe ahead of time, uh, some people came out and set up like one of those like giant lily pads with some like kindling and like took it out to like position it over where he like would have passed or like in that general area? Yeah, I was um, gonna suggest something similar. You might like can add if you want, but like you know how they do like the little like uh, I don't want to say little bags, but like the little things that they light, a little, light a little fire might float off. The land uh, right. little, little lily pads that they light and kind of floats out there towards it. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe like a bunch of small ones that people like set in the water and they kind of like drift off on the lily pads. Uh huh. Beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to say the adults get to do the lanterns, but all of the kids find seashells and like carve his initials in it and they cast those into the sea oh oh beautiful in the movie <laughs> i know i know this is isn't that so fun me and kayla yeah. <laughs> anyway go ahead chris did you no one's getting them out <laughs> um i think i mentioned like in his room he was like a great hunter or something. Yeah. So I'll think like his hunting buddies went on a hunt and brought back like oh, food means... for everybody and some pelts and stuff. Oh, it was like Chris. their last hunt with him. Take an inspiration for the next game. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mark another hope on your sheet. Ooh, let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, she said that one was good. good. <laughs> that was beautiful. It pulled from other stuff in the past. Mm -hmm. Like it was very, very mm -hmm. good job. Okay, um, and again, I ribbit funerals in my mind are not really a speaking event. It is a personal to each person thing. And so it is just this gathering of a lot of the populace of the island that are all saying goodbye quietly. And the last thing that I want is this is gonna be Steven, Justin, and Chris. Each of you, impromptu, make up a salute that you think the people of this land would have, and Kayla is going to pick her favorite, and that will be her people's salute that they do as a goodbye. Each one of you do some kind of salute as a reminder. Live long and prosper is a salute. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? The Hunger Games. The, the Hunger Games you know, yeah. do some kind of. It can just be that. You know. I know you're probably going to, but don't use this for the still image of the video. But I'm just thinking, like, it's more of like a more of a squat, and they're just like a pose, like you know. <laughs> I promise I won't use it. I do love that. That's fantastic. So cute. Very good at battle. <laughs> All right, Stephen, Chris. I would um, say. So, go ahead. Okay. No, okay. Go ahead. Um, they get down and they do a quick ribbit hop. Oh, a little hop. Yeah. And they don't do it all timed at the same time, so it's like little... It's like a 21 oh, gun salute, but it's uh, ribbits uh, Yeah, the soldiers, it really is just like... Like a wave. <laughs> Steven, what is your salute? Um, so I think, like, rather than, like, uh, like hops or anything, because that's kind of, like, their general, like, 
like way they are anyway they stand like very tall as tall as they can so they stretch up on like their like tips of their like uh ribbit feet like i'm very um, big uh-huh mm-hmm. and then they give a quick and uh, enlarge of the the throat and then they like when it like deflates it's like a uh like almost like a like a chorus of like uh music kind of like oh. trumpets or something like that oh Oh. Mm-hmm. These are all very good. So Kayla, I'm going to give you the option. You can choose one of these, which would be fun. If you have something in mind, it is your, in your nation, you could make it your own thing. But I think we have some excellent contenders here. I do. I'm so nervous about picking. Um, well, I'm going to say, I do like the little hops that everybody's just quietly hopping. Very I think cute. that one's very cute. Yeah. They were all good, but that one's a good one. Okay, so in that final moment, I will say, mm-hmm. you know, as you all see all of these seashells being tossed in and the kind of lily pad lanterns that are floating across the water, some of them getting enough light in them that they begin to drift into the air. And a final giant lily pad shaped somewhat into the shape of like a canoe of some kind. You see the family stepping forward and placing something meaningful from their relationship with their father or their husband into the canoe. Nora, what is yours? Mm, we're gonna say um oh like um when you know how this is like in like victorian edwardian times where they like go into season or whatever and they like are presented at a ball like her dress that he had made for her she puts it in queen bedelia puts her is there anything specific that ribbits use for their wedding kind of thing? Or is it just a ring? Not that I can think of. Go ham. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to say that for ribbit specific, unless anybody has a great idea, anything for a ribbit specifically, I'm going to say up. because it's hat centered, that it is her instead of something that he it's, it is her first Royal cap. That he was given, that she was given when she was made a royal by marrying. She or could it could it be uh, um, like the first royal hat still, but like her like wedding hat, which like maybe has like a veil attached Ooh, to it or something? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then Liliana is going to step forward, and she is wordlessly and soundlessly going to place just a stone. That's it. A small weathered rock. She doesn't explain it. She just places it in and steps back and she is holding it together. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then all of you at that last moment, all of the rivets begin to starting with the children, always the first and then boop, boop. And the whole crowd of just popping. Um, do you guys all hop as well? Are you all hopping with us? Yeah. yeah I'll, too. I'll wait till they do, but it feels disrespectful for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, gi- I'll give a, a hop and Bill will too, but I'll also give uh, the yin, like the yin send away, which is they he, he would go up to the edge of the water and he would kind of sink his hand in the water for a second and hold it in the water and then bring like a handful up to his chest because they yeah. do Aww. signify like the importance of that. That's kind of their bonding uh, thing mm-hmm. within the, the yin clan. That's so beautiful, guys. Okay. And that closes out the funeral procession. The last link. And really and truly, this is the very final thing of the evening. So if there's anything that you guys want or need out of this that we can't recap offline, like if y'all wanted to work on projects, we'll talk about that offline because y'all have had like five days, you know? Um, Steven's face is crazy. (laughs) But anything last minute. Um, could I maybe like with the dream lady um, ask her to give Liliana like some nice yes. dreams and stuff? Because yeah. she seems pretty bummed out. So you're starting to visit in your in the nighttime. Yeah, like ask her. You know what I mean? Just to help her out a little bit. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So you go one of those evenings, you wake up, step out of your body and step through that portal. And she kind of knowingly smiles in that interaction and you wake up. But over the next couple of days, you notice Liliana seems sturdier, more confident in herself and has more of an appetite again. You actually see her eating some of the spiders on a stick as she's like there. She's still sad. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, on the sixth, I think, yes, sixth day that you are there, at some point during a meal, an attendant comes over, and you are all eating just together at this point. Everybody else has been called away. You're all eating, and a servant approaches and she comes over to you and Nora and she kind of does a little, um, ma'am, so there's a, there's a call for you in the observatory if, you'd, if, if, if you would be willing to take it. I, I apologize for interrupting your meal, but she says that it's, that it's quite urgent. Yeah, can I bring my friend? Uh, <laughs> ma'am, whatever you'd like. It's a miss, yeah, okay. a miss, Marlo Fairwind? Oh, it's Marlo. Okay, y'all can say if you want to. It might just be girl talk. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> All right. Who's going with Anora and who's staying here? I'll, I'll go with her, I guess. Or are we all going? Let's have the whole party go. I'm going to say that. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's... I was waiting for the rest. I was like, okay, I'll pick up my plate. And... <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I'm just like eating on the way. Okay. And you are led by this servant into the Warren Palace, far onto the, never eat sour watermelons, western side. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do the, the compass. I'm not good at it. Um, on the western side. This is a room that you did not choose to go to, but it is the observatory. You enter through, as you come in, it actually opens into a small stone arched hallway that is only passable by one person at a time. You all are now going single file. And you come out into what is actually a stone room, circular in shape and of a vaulted ceiling, 15 feet up. Through the ceiling, there is a perfectly circular hole through which you can see the blue sky of day. A couple of other things about this room. One is that in on one side of the room, there is a set of very steep steps that goes about 12 feet up. And then there is a window there out looking across the western side of the island. This is the only, and it's more of a porthole than anything else. Any one of you that did climb it, you could actually see outside of that and does overlook that side of the island. The other thing, though, is in the center of the room, there is a giant crystal orb that is black. Anora, you know, though y'all don't necessarily need to use it, you know that what this is is an orb of revealing your team needs a way to surveil the islands your the island sorry your royal family needs a way to surveil the island but there aren't really towers here it's hard to see things what you have instead and you can see there is a cage on one side a very small like cricket cage effectively that inside rests a small mechanical dragonfly if you open that and toss it into the air it flies up through that hole in the ceiling and looks out across the island and anything it sees is projected onto that orb if y'all had come here before y'all would have seen that the tides through this magical orb. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. yeah. The other piece, though, because you're ignoring this for now, what you do see as well is, again, this is a circular room. <clears throat> and, sorry. This is a circular room and set into 
all of these divots around the room are these other sending stones, speaking stones oh, nice. of all different colors, okay? Mm -hmm. And they, you would know, Anora, each one is set and representative of a different nation. So, for example, there is one on the western side that is covered in moss and it's kind of a green jade. That one represents Greenhaven to the west. And mm. there is someone on the other end of that speaking stone that you could talk to. One of them is glowing and you can hear kind of... What is the sound for Marlo Fairwinds orb? Do you remember? Oh God, I can't remember. It's not the sound of crystal. I can't remember what it was. I can't remember it either. It's okay. Sorry. No, it's it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's just a faint ding. Okay. Ding. Mm -hmm. Ding. And it is there in the direction that would look out to the city of welcome cerulea as you approach it you pick it up mm -hmm. yeah i pick up the phone <laughs> and you can on both ends of these speaking orbs you hear little click, click sounds that establish a connection mm. anora anora Marlo. oh <laughs> darling I've it's so good to news. hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. How are you holding up? I'm doing okay. I'm worried about my sister. But she's getting better. She started eating again. Mom's doing great. She's I... being real strong, so. I'm so sorry to hear about all that. I really, you know, I it's been a while, but I, I, I really liked your father. Mm -hmm. He's a very good man. He's a good man. Thank you for saying that. I, I hate to call it a time like this, but, well, do you know that? Do you know this? The ward, the arcane ward that you had restored. Yeah, yeah, of course. That was not that long ago. Yeah. Well, it's, it's. I don't know how to say this. It's not working. It's restored just enough, and and the city's defenses are stilled. But we're not getting it fully charged. And so, well, I need someone. And I I, I hate to ask this of you, but people aren't answering my calls. I I need someone to take it to be restored. Is there any chance that you need an excuse to get away from the island? You know, I I think I could use some time away. People are <sighs> looking at me different now. And you hear the relief flood over her. Oh, <laughs> Anora, that You'll is- You'll be doing so me a favor, Marlo. <laughs> that is so wonderful. And listen, I have arranged the most gorgeous sky ship to pick you up. It can be there in two days. Would you be ready by then? She's gonna turn in and look to her her friends, and she like does her. You guys, uh, you want to help Marlo again and ride a skyship in two days? I get a skyship. Yeah, yeah. Arg. Yeah. Arg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody's real hyped. We're all very excited. Oh. <laughs> God, you have no idea how relieved I was. Oh, it's, it's the fastest in the fleet. You will be aboard the best. It's actually brand new technology. And she begins dithering to you over the next couple of minutes about the skyship that she'll be on, an illustrious skyship that is truly a new invention of the town of of the kingdom of Cerulea that's been thought up by some of the best and brightest there and so in two days she says that it will arrive to pick you up at just before dawn and that is how we're going to close out for the night as you all listen to her dithering away and she closes the call with kiss kiss Anora. Kiss, kiss. <laughs> and we've done it, boys and girls. Yay! We saved the back kingdom. There were no coups. No coups! Huzzah! Huzzah! No coups. <laughs> I
I might have got a date. Who knows? I know I was going to say you might have fallen in love. I don't know. We did mm-hmm. so uh, love, much. Love loves pretty strong, but she is a pretty pretty frog lady. Yeah, she, okay, I, well, don't take advantage of. <laughs> <laughs> don't take advantage of anybody. Allison, <laughs> Nora, so she make uh, you know Miss Loretta. She she makes her own decisions. She's out there. <laughs> Working nine to five, like a pilot in love with a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you guys so so much for for joining us. I know that this was a slower, like little catch up episode and everything. But as a reminder, some of us are going to be here on Friday for our level six one shot, and then next Monday we are officially launching into the Marauders of Windfall. So if you would like to see that, please join us here. If not, it's going to get posted to YouTube, so you'll see that. Windfall. <laughs> so, marauders of Windfall. <laughs> F. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. Anything to add before we close out, guys? Make sure you're following us on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We have a great Discord. We do a lot of chit chatting over there. Sure and then do. obviously uh, YouTube. We need as many YouTube uh, subscribers as we can get. Because yes. I just like that number. It's a good, nice, large number right now. And that makes me so happy. Yeah. It's just like it's so large, nice number. Like, hey, it's in triple digits. That's large to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. Squire, NC Cats, and the Window Books, Not Compressed Dog. Dom PV, who was a bot, but everyone else, Gene Screen, thank you guys so much. Y'all have a happy 4th of July, and we'll see you on Friday. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. We have 67 followers on uh, Twitch. That's my favorite oh, number. Yeah. It's not a fancy number. It's just that that is my favorite number. So it makes oh. me. That makes it fancy. Very exciting. That does make it fancy.